Vans Park Series Tour has been ripping all around the globe this year with our Women's Continental Championships. Then in August, we brought it back home to the surf and sun of Huntington Beach, California for our Women's Global Qualifier. All this leading up to our Women's World Championships happening here today in Shanghai, China. Chris Pastris here from the deck of the park here in the Bun District, where yesterday the best women's park terrain skaters in the world battled it out in our semifinals. Led by the ever so stylish Nora Vasconcelos, and today our top eight are heading into the final to crown a new Vans Park Series world champion. To hear more about today's action and the 2017 VPS season, sending it up to my broadcast bros in the booth, Neil Hendricks, Chris Cote, Justin Regan, you're fired. Take it away, boys. <laughs> well, it's literally been all hands on deck. We've been battling the elements here. As you can see behind us, the park is dry enough to go. We're just going to drop the hammer. We're going to roll this thing in here. Chris Cote here with Neil Hendricks. Neil, it's been a long road to get to Shanghai. We're finally here, <laughs> and I think we're about to have a skate We've contest. We've been in this booth for six hours. You know, you see the crew behind us helping dry the park. Steve Van Doren is out there. I see Tony Alva helping dry the course. We are excited to have a freaking skateboard contest. It's the most legendary park drying team ever assembled. <laughs> now we started this women's tour in Huntington Beach, California, and basically picking up where she left off, our reigning women's world champion, Brighton Zoiner, came into Huntington Beach hot, took the win down there in pretty dominant fashion. Yeah, what about this girl's year? She won the world championships last year in Malmo. This summer she turned 13, won the X Games, and then took this big win in Huntington Beach. In the last year, she's gone from this young underdog to now she's the favorite at every women's park contest around the world. You're absolutely right. Super consistent, obviously tons of confidence. Any contest she enters, she's a, she's a threat to win. One note about Brighton, though, she's got some work to do. She qualified sixth yesterday. The other girls, the veterans like Lizzie and Nora, really stepped it up at this stop. Yeah, we got very used to seeing these young guns coming up through the ranks with the veterans not quite getting into it. But as we go into the finals, let's take a look back at what happened yesterday. Again, we've been battling rain throughout this whole week. So we pulled the whole semis up to Friday. We ran the semifinals yesterday, and what a show the women put on. Yeah, amazing contest yesterday. These are some of the girls that unfortunately just barely missed the cut. Dora Varela from Brazil took a huge slam in practice but was able to make a couple runs. Poppy Star Olsen from Australia. Bryce Wettstein barely missed out, ended up ninth in the eight cut. Hannah Zanzi is always super fun to watch. Really unique bag of tricks. Amelia Brodka doing Doing it for Poland at this stop, and Grace Marhofer, one of the most exciting young talents from Florida on the east coast of the U.S. These are the girls that are you're going to see today. Jordan Barrett has become one of the girls that you can count on being a podium threat at all of these contests. Little Brazilian dance party. This is NDR Asp, skated great. Another one of the girls that took a huge slam in practice. We didn't even know if she was going to be able to take her runs. Luckily, Indy skated good enough to make the finals today. Then you see Brighton Zoiner. This is going to be your top four here. Brighton, of course, always a threat to win any contest she enters. But it was Lizzie Armanto and Nora Vasconcelos, usually not the most consistent yeah, out of the field. Yesterday they put it down. It's so cool. You know, we've been talking so much this last year about the young girls. Lizzie and Nora are kind of the veterans of women skateboarding at 24. And these girls have been doing so much cool stuff. Lizzie just came out with a new birdhouse video part. Nora's been traveling the world with Adidas. How about that last trick in her run? Kickflip pivot. She did the kickflip back disaster revert in practice. Great skating by Nora and Lizzie. Nora put together a championship run yesterday at the 91.47. That was the highest single score for the semifinals yesterday. Today it's gonna to be a little bit different. Of course, with that rain delay, we had to shorten things up a little bit. These eight skaters you see on your screen are gonna get only three runs. So they gotta make each and every run count. Of course, it's gonna be 40 second runs. Same format, same judges. They're looking for the exact same type of skateboard. You gotta get radical in this park to get their attention to get those big scores. I do think it's worth talking about what a different scenario it is at this event, because these girls have had so little practice all week. These girls are really trying to get used to this park on the fly. Now we always like to make our picks, and this being the World Championships, 
Let's just go ahead and pick some winners. Who you got, Neil? I'm going with Brighton Zoyner. Like I said, she was, you know, the youngest underdog. She's really good at putting runs together. Smart contest skater. Three huge wins in the last year. She won the World Championships. She won the X Games. She won the Tour Stop at Huntington Beach. She's got good contest IQ. For being that young, she's really smart when it comes to putting her runs together. Solid pick, and she is your reigning world champion. Well, I went to uh, yesterday's top qualifier. My pick who I think is going to be your 2017 world champion, Nora Vasconcelos. She had the most tech run of all the semifinalists yesterday. She seems to be building confidence consistently. She always said, I'm not a contest skater, but she sure looks like it, especially yesterday. And, you know, you got to hand it to her. She loves cats, so th there's something there. Uh, Chris Pastris is on the deck. Pastris, who is your pick? Who will be our world champion? Some good picks, guys, and I'm going with the veteran Lizzie Armanto for a few reasons. She missed the podium podium at last year's World Championships in Malmo, so she's very motivated here in Shanghai. She's got one of the best styles in the field, and she's got an amazing trick selection that includes proper inverts. Go, Lizzie. Well, we hope to see some of those inverts from Lizzie Armanto. There are our three picks, and now it's going to be up to these ladies, eight of the world's best female park skaters. They've battled their way through Huntington Beach. They've got continental championships under their belts. The course here today is just custom made for shredding. These girls have been loving it in the in the short time they've had to practice. Yeah, it's been really compressed practice time. We're gonna take a look at Nora's course preview, filmed a couple days ago, during the break between the showers. This park has a ton of features. My favorites are rail into bank feature. It's super fun, really kind of thick rail, and it goes the whole distance of the bank. So you can kind of approach it from the deck or from the bank. I really like the middle uh, like tombstone thing. You can hit it from all four directions, and each way has its own like difficulty. This main feature in the middle, which is basically like a huge launch ramp, it has a really steep entry back into the vert wall. I think this course is really technical. I don't think it's as open and flowy as Huntington Beach or some of the past parks, but it's gonna like offer a whole different variety for kind of everybody who's skating it, so. So there you see a course preview from yesterday's first place qualifier, Nora Vasconcelos. So I gotta throw it out there, Neil. We saw a lot of great skating yesterday. What was it about Nora's run that had her qualifying first? She just put an amazing run together. It, she's got such a rad style. A lot of these girls do, you, know, you might see some of the girls doing the same combinations or tricks, even just the air over the launch ramp into the, the air in the big deep end. You saw a lot of girls do that combination. Nora did it so good, just like a styled out backside grab into a really late grab air in the deep end. And then the kickflip pivot at the end of her run was uh, you know, one of the most tech tricks of the contest. Yeah, that's one of the more obvious things that I'm seeing. Nora's really one of the only women throwing flip tricks yeah, into that, her runs. Yeah, that's huge. She qualified first by seven points. You know, when you saw the rest of the competitors, the scores were really close. Nora smoked them yesterday. Watching Nora in Huntington Beach, that's really where you saw kind of a different Nora come out. When she got into the top three, she was almost surprised in herself. She said it again multiple times. I don't understand. I'm not a contest skater. I know just from skating contests for years, when, when you do good in a contest, it helps your confidence so much. You're just like, yes, I can do this, and it helps you, you know, in the future. Absolutely. Lizzie Armanto is another name that's been a heartbreaker in the past. We all know how good she is, and she does – the best inverts, the best backside air. She's got all the tricks you want to see, but she sometimes has trouble putting them together back to back to back in runs. You know what I think it was with Lizzie? Lizzie's been doing so much other cool stuff. She filmed an amazing part for the new Birdhouse video, traveling around with the Birdhouse team, you know, doing a ton of photo shoots for Van. She was on the cover of Thrasher, and, and now that stuff's done. She put out her video part that she was working on really hard for a couple years, and she's been able to focus and you know, you can you see how good Lizzie's able to skate when she's able to focus. Now, speaking of focus, you know, we've been here since 9 a.m. this morning. The girls were ready to go bright and early. We've been going rain delay on rain delay. These girls were doing karaoke next to us <laughs> throughout the morning. So they've had a lot of time to think about it. We've also got the whole crowd. They've been here since early in the morning as well. One guy who's been on the deck since sunup, Chris Pastris, is with the one and only Christian Asoy. 
Yeah, I'm super stoked and honored. Christian Asoy join us here at the World Championships. Christian, how's the Shanghai experience been for you so far? It's been incredible. You know, I'm part Chinese, so this is like coming home, so to speak. But uh, just being here for the girls' event that's about to go down, it's just amazing to see how far they've come. I remember when Kara Beth was the only girl who was just annihilating, you know, the, the discipline. But to see these girls, and I even have three girls in the competition from all over the world, one from Japan, Kihana, Gawa, then Dora Varela from Brazil, and then Cody Tomana from Hawaii. And it's just beautiful to watch the culture of women skateboarding come to this place of being on the, the biggest platform of skateboarding today, and that's the Vans Park Series. And why do you think the progression has happened as rapidly as it has with the women? I think it's the girls that do it, you know what I mean? Because back in the day when we were skateboarding, no one was going to like hand us you know it on a silver platter we had to go out and get it we had to perform we had to have passion we had to say you know we're not taking no for an answer and i believe that the girls have done that and it's proven that's why they're here and i'm very proud of them and just stoked to be able to support them you know with the soy skateboards you know i'm just fortunate to still be here to even enjoy it but to be a part of you know the women's you know and girls category is something that I'm proud of and I'm stoked to see these girls showing up and not only is it just a girls category but they are ripping they are shredding the face off of some of the men and they're doing it with style and it's just it's amazing and you are arguably the best skateboard coach in the business what advice do you give these girls before the run you know, confidence. You got to build their confidence. You got to know them personally. You got to know what their what their weaknesses and their strengths are. And you got to like it, it. It's an art, you know. And each one's different. But when you can, you know, understand the person inside, not just their their talent. I think that that adds that extra it factor when it comes to coaching. And and I just do my best. You know, I mean, I've been there. I've been in the thick of it so I can kind of get in their heads and tell them what I've experienced. And usually it's spot on, Yeah. you know? I've heard you advise the girls to breathe. That's one of the things I hear you say. Yeah, and I was taught to breathe. My father always taught me to breathe, focus, concentrate. And I learned that from Bruce Lee. I learned that from my predecessors like Jay Adams, Tony Alvish. These guys like taught me, like, you have to stay focused. You got to be, be in tune with what's going on and if if i can encourage them to do that i think we're going to have some winners awesome. well, we're super stoked to have you here honored christian asoy the legend black back to you guys in the booth right on thank you pastress always cool to have christian asoy here we got jeff grasso here tony alva steve van Dorn. the list of legends goes deep pretty here rad in shanghai ambassadors for skateboarding absolutely well three young skaters that uh got here by getting first second and third in last year's World Championships in Malmo, Sweden. Brighton Zoiner, Kisa Nakamura, Jordan Barrett. They are our Vans Park Series select pros who were pre-qualified into Shanghai. How do you think those three skaters are gonna go today in the finals? Yeah, those three have really proven themselves to be some of the top girls in the world. And uh, we've seen you know, such huge improvement from those girls. Um, it, it's cool to watch this girls contest because literally there's every single one of them could win this contest. It's up to these eight skaters to take the world championship today. We're going to take a very quick break. We'll be right back with some skateboarding live from Shanghai, China. This is the Vans Park Series World Championship. Stay tuned.
And we are live for the first time ever from Shanghai, China. This is Vance Park Series World Championships. Chris Cote here with Neil Hendricks. Neil, you've had a long skate career, and I know you've dealt with rain delays. That's what these young ladies have been dealing with all day. Start, stop. Are we going? Are we not going to go? How does that deal? How do, yeah, how do you deal it, with that? It is psyche? really hard. We're, we're so lucky to be up in this dry broadcast booth. You know, it, it's funny because it's just barely drizzling. I looked over my shoulder and I was like, hey, let's do this. And a couple of the girls looked up at me and they're like, it's drizzling. So uh, unfortunately, we got a little bit more rain. It is, it is pretty tough, but we saw earlier this year at Manly, Australia, the first stop this year, we had kind of the same situation, rain off and on, and it was amazing how the guys were still able to rip and skate super good when they had a few starts and stops. Well, you know, when we started this contest yesterday, men and women, both in the same boat, not a lot of practice went down, and of course, this is a brand new park, custom built, there's the one and only Steve Van Doren. He's got a smile, he's positive, you know, and. If Steve says we're going to have a contest, we're going to have a contest. Yeah, and a quick shout out to Vans Asia over here. Cool, um, they always do some cool art in the park, but a, a really cool mural in there to uh, commemorate our buddy P-Stone that we lost a couple weeks ago. There's a cool uh, P-Stone art piece in this park. So thinking about all of P-Stone's friends and family around the world and the whole skateboard family that lost uh, one of our bros a couple weeks ago. It's always... Uh you know, this, this is a big community, and you, and you see that. This past couple days in Shanghai, you've seen everybody hanging out together, going from the park, back and around town. You see the whole crew, and of course, you see right here, everybody pitch in. Steve Van Doren, Christian Asoy, they do not have to help drive the park. That's not part of their job, but they want to see this contest happen. So everybody is all hands on deck, and of course, we're right there with you. We want to see this thing go down. We want to crown a men's and women park skating world champion today yeah absolutely and yeah i guess that's one of the good things about the rain delays you end up hanging out with um some new friends and some of your skateboard family from around the world that you might you might skate with some of these people um but then uh you end up kind of hanging out with them for hours on end during these rain delays and it, it's funny just talking to all the skaters that are here for the event everyone loves the city of shanghai everyone's had so much fun just amazing kind of futuristic video game city here in China. So everyone's had a great time. Just wish we would have had a little bit more sun. You know, hands down, the, the coolest backdrop anyone's ever seen for a skate contest. 100%. The skyline here at Shanghai, you can see it's right there behind the park. So the photos we've been seeing coming out of this park already have been stunning. This skyline at night is nothing short of incredible. So thank you again to our host city, Shanghai. There you see Ryan Clements from the border, and uh, that's an unenviable position because he really has to figure yeah. out, look, we've got a certain amount of time. Yeah. We gotta get this thing going. He's the one that makes the final call on if it's dry enough to skate. Well, Chris Pastris is on the deck with our reigning world champion, Brighton Zoiner. So Brighton, we've had these rain delays, stop and start all day. How is it affecting your skateboarding so far? Well, um if it wasn't raining right now, we would be practicing and starting the event, but since it's raining, we kind of have been just waiting for it to not, and we have to dry, and then it rains again. It's kind of crazy. Have you been able to get full practice runs in? Um, not really, like, full practice, but I've been, we've all been, like, man managing, like, getting, like, equal runs and kind of, like, you know, just putting, like, not really taking forever, like, getting our tricks just, like, so... It's a level playing field. None of you have had much practice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And how about with your confidence? Does the rain delays affect it at all? I mean, it's not like when it's not raining, I'll skate. And if it doesn't, you know, it's just what it is. And you qualified in sixth. I know you want to improve on that. You got any game plans? Um, well, I kind of figured out, like, how to fit all my tricks in because... Like, we didn't get much practice before, so I didn't, like, have enough time to see how, like, long the run was. So I'm going to see if I can fit more tricks in. Awesome. Are you feeling any added pressure with being our reigning world champion? Um, no. We're just all having fun, and it's a good time in Shanghai. I know all you girls hang out. Who's your favorite to skate with? All of them, but my favorite, well, like, I love all of us together. It kind of makes us this, like, funny group, and... You know, I love seeing, I barely see any of these girls, so to see them again, it's all of them. Yeah. Well, I think it's drying up, and we're going to get you in. Good luck. 
we hope to see you back on the podium. Back to you guys upstairs. Thank you, Pastress Brighton Zoiner, our reigning world champion. And that, of course, means she is our number one qualified Vans Park Series Select Pro. So what does that mean for her coming into this event? Yeah, it means she's uh, she's the favorite and the, the top seed. And uh, it, I mean, think about how cool it would be to be a 13-year-old pro skater traveling around the world with your friends who are also like 14 and then some of the, the grown-ups like Lizzie and Nora. Pretty, uh, pretty rad experience for the, the young girls like Brighton and Jordan Barrett and Grace Marhofer. When you when you watch Brighton skate, you forget that she's 13 years old and she is such a powerhouse, so consistent. There's our 2017 Van Spark Series Select Pros, Brighton Zoiner, Jordan Barrett, Kisa Nakamura. So that's your one, two, and three from Malmo, Sweden, last year's world championships. So that means they were pre-qualified to get in here into Shanghai. That didn't mean they had an easy road to the finals, they had to skate in the semifinals yesterday, which was a tough, stacked field. Yeah, they still had to get top eight yesterday. Luckily, all those three were able to rip hard enough for the top eight. And I really feel like all three of those girls have a threat to win today. Yeah, Jordan Barrett, you can tell she's just been kind of eyeing out her line. She hasn't really been showing all her cards. You know, she's hanging back on some of her tricks. And she's got a definite great time management. You know, she has the ability to fit in a lot of tricks. So uh, there you hear the crowd yeah. cheering. You got just, just fully packed on the deck, in the stands. Uh, these Chinese skate fans have been here since 9 a.m. in the rain. They're ready cool. to see some skate. Yeah, shout out to the Shanghai skate fans. We weren't able to fit a huge grandstand here. There's just, there's one big seating there. I saw a line down the street just for people waiting to get in, but those fans have been here for like six hours through all the rain delays. They are dedicated to shredding. So let's talk about Nora Vasconcelos a little bit because I feel like she kind of snuck into that top spot yesterday. Obviously the best run of the day. That was hands down, easy decision. How do you think Nora's gonna react to having to wait and knowing that she's been that it, in that top spot and just wanting to go, I wanting mean, to skate? If Nora makes the run that she made yesterday, she wins. But that was such, it, it was almost a miracle run. Everything just worked out so perfect. It'd be amazing if we could see that run again. Well, the more Nora we get, the better. Let's take a look at a profile of Nora Vasconcelos. My name's Nora Vasconcelos, and I'm from Oceanside, California. The bowl, park skating, flow parks being built like this, it's very new, and it kind of brings in a lot of like the best of both worlds from street and like bigger transition skating. I think it's really nice because it mixes things up a little bit and everybody's so good that it just is like such a good showcase. One of the best parts about Park Series and like what really makes it different is just the overall community and because it's like every event is very exciting. I have so many friends who compete in it so it's just a really good excuse to all get together and skate and watch people just like completely destroy it. Like what these guys are doing and what I've seen some young girls doing and the progression and stuff is really insane. You know, I love that Nora, she's, she's super funny. She's got a great personality, but she is just a stellar spokesperson, not just for female skating, yeah. but for skateboarding in general. I think it's so rad that all these young girls have Lizzie and Nora to look up to. What amazing role models, like you said, just for female skateboarding and skateboarding in general. Great, you know, just ambassadors for skateboarding that all the young girls, you know, the Grace and Brighton and Bryce Wettstein and all those girls can really aspire to be. And Nora doesn't necessarily identify herself as super competitive, but I tell you, when she gets that game face on and she starts putting her run together, watch out, Nora can take this thing. Yeah, her run yesterday in the semifinals is one of the best girls park runs I've ever seen ever. From X Games, Vans Park Series, any contest around the world, that was an amazing performance. So let's set the scene here. We got the park dry. We think we're gonna have a contest here. We've got eight of the world's best female park skaters, and we've got some of the best male park skaters. There's Pedro Barras dry in the park. <laughs> That's so cool just to see all the guys chip in. When I looked over my shoulder last time, I saw Jack Fardell from Australia, who was uh, our last eighth place qualifier to sneak into the finals. It's cool to see all the guys, Pedro and the boys, helping out. You know, it, it's really the painted surfaces. You saw Pedro run up to the top of that 
we've been calling it the Square Cano, the Square Volcano Tombstone Extension. You saw Pedro kind of drying that painted area. It's really the painted areas that are, hold the moisture and are really slick when you hit them. The deck as well, right? Some of these some of these ladies are starting with a roll in from the deck, and that could be yeah, dangerous when it's wet like that. because when you look at how this park was constructed, the whole riding surface is concrete, but the deck surface is wood. So the concrete tends to dry way faster than the wood. That painted wood just seems to hold the water. And some of the girls, like Lizzie and Norda, Nora and Jordan Barrett, they're starting their runs from the deck. So we've got to make sure that those decks are dry before we can start the contest. All right, and without this guy, there is no contest. We've got Chris Pastras on the deck with the one and only Mr. Steve Van Doren. That's right, we got the godfather of vans here. Steve Van Doren, super honored. So Steve, tell us what it's like. World Championships, Shanghai, how stoked are you? I am so stoked, this is awesome. I mean, here we are, Shanghai, China. World Championships after four different stops, 22 qualifications to get here. We got the best eight women, the best eight men coming up. We've had rain delays, been drying this thing all day long, all week long, but this crowd out here, been here since 10 o'clock, you know, that's like six hours, in the rain with umbrellas, they're stoked, but what a sight. It looks like Mars over here, but uh, Vans is super proud to have the Park Series here in Shanghai. Yeah, and I know, there's been years of development for the park series. And how's the whole experience and the whole, the whole series just developing? And how's that experience been for you? You know, it all came from the young skaters. You know, it started off, and, and, and it gets younger every, every, every season, every stop. They keep getting younger, 14, 15, 16-year-olds. But it's honored, honored that, you know, they chose to come ride things that they want to because a lot of the parks around the world now are parks. You know, there's transition to it. And so we're just super excited to have uh, all these great athletes come to the tour. And skateboarding and hole is a winner, winner, winner. And, you know, we look forward to great champions coming out of here today on the second year of the Park Vans Park Series, but uh, in the future. Awesome. Thank you for everything you do for skateboarding. We love you. Steve Van Doren, back to you guys. All right, so this is what's about to happen. We are going to crown a world champion for female park skating. Generally, we give four runs of 40 seconds each, but with these rain delays, we got to make it three runs. But really, I mean, that still gives the judges a lot to think about. Yeah, and it still gives the girls three runs to try a really hard run. We were talking to the girls. We were talking to the border, deciding how we could shorten this up. We felt good going with three runs. We talked about two, and the girls were like, we want to be able to try really hard runs. Let's go with three. So we got three runs. We're not going to do a first wall rebate like we normally do. 40 second runs in this park. Yeah, the best one run will count. So really it's the same game plan. You just don't have that fourth and final run to kind of add that explanation point. So commitment, degree of difficulty, the judges, they want to be blown out of their seats. And another difference, instead of three judges, as we usually have on Vance Park Series, for the World Championships, we get five. Yeah, we got five judges. We really went out of our way to bring an international panel. We've got judges from Brazil, Australia, Canada, Italy, and the U.S. Great uh, panel of judges that the border brought over here to the World Championships in Shanghai. And this is not about qualification. This is not about advancing through this round. This is for everything this right here. It. This is for the World Championships. This is no time to be holding back. And uh, I'll tell you what, these young ladies are gonna skate like they've been shot out of a cannon. They've been ready to go since 10 a.m. Yeah, you see a couple of the rippers on screen right now. That's Grace Marhofer talking to Poppy Star. Poppy Star just barely missed the cut to make the finals. Here we go, this is your Vans Park Series 2017 Women's Final for the World Championships. Kihana Ogawa from Japan, Brighton Zoyner from Encinitas, California, Jordan Barrett from Haleiwa, Hawaii, Lizzie Armanto from Santa Monica, Indiara Asp from Florinopolis, Brazil, Kisa Nakamura, Jordan Barrett, Grace Marhofer, Lizzie Armanto, and our number one qualifier from yesterday, Nora Vasconcelos. You know, we're gonna start with Kihana Ogawa. The teenagers have been ruling. Yeah. She is only 16 years and old. We heard um, Krishna Soy talking about, you know, a few of the young team riders for Hasoi Skateboards. Kihana is one of them. I saw Christian working with her yesterday during the semifinals. Pastors mentioned it. What a what a good mentor and, and skateboard coach to have Krishna Soy, you know, skateboarding Hall of Famer right there. Uh, Kihana Ogawa totally ripped yesterday. Snuck in eighth qualifying spot. How stoked is the crowd that we're gonna have a skateboard contest. 40 seconds on the clock. So Kihana is a continental championship from the Asiana area. And 
uh, she is, like you said, she snuck in. She is gonna be our sacrificial lamb. I do not envy this young skater right here. But ladies and gentlemen, we are in. This is the World Championships at the Vance Park Series, starting with Kihana Ogawa. Yeah, Kihana won our Asian qualifier a few weeks ago in Singapore, unfortunately going down on the front side tail slide. There's gotta be nerves involved. I mean, for waiting for that long and then they go, okay, you're in, you're yeah. in, go, go, go. Undoubtedly, that is a really hard decision. Indy Ara asked, 19 years old from Florinopolis, Brazil. She runs with a crowd that includes Pedro Barras, Marilo Perez. She is in the park with 40 seconds. Yeah, we love the Brazilian contingent that's on the Vans Park Series. Indy took a huge slam in practice right before the semifinals yesterday. When she got to the contest today, she showed us all the big giant swell bow that she's got in her arm from this slam. Not holding her back at all, ripping run so far for Indiara. It's gonna be all about putting down that first run, getting something on the board, and then trying to build on that run. That has to be the strategy these ladies are using. Oh, another huge slam for Indy, layback air and totally saw her feet slide on her skateboard. Hopefully she didn't hit her face because that was a wicked slam for NDR Asp. Second day in a row we've seen her go down with a huge fall. We've seen at least one big slam for, for NDR for, for every event. She's so tough. She Jumps is back so up. tough, She's man. She's ready to go. And, you know, we were talking about it yesterday. All of these girls, you see that elbow. Luckily, we've got some great medical here. Yeah, straight into it. This is gonna be rapid fire skateboarding, folks. This is your reigning world champion, Brighton Zoyner. Brighton was a little disappointed in her sixth place qualifying spot yesterday. She said she was gonna try and change her run up. Look at that backside blunt. Really tricky lip trick. Front lip slide on the bank. That deep end. A little Andract, hand on coping. Back disaster revert, pumping with speed backwards with the gate twist, right under coping in the deep end. Couple last tricks, lip slide revert, three, two, Solid one. Run. That is going to be time. Great first run for your defending world champion, Brighton Zoyner. Pretty clear that the homework paid off there. She is fired up at that first run. That's and huge. She is going to be your leader by because far. Because you're able to take a little bit more risk when you when you make that first run. You can try, you have two more chances. Maybe she tries to 360 the jump box. Well, the score comes through at 85.97. Brighton Zoyner well into the lead. This young lady finished third place in last year's World Championships, Kisa Nakamura. Kisa is so rad to watch. She is just like a wrecking ball of power. She goes for everything, always holding on for dear life, has a really big bag of tricks. She's got the air over the jump box straight in the Andrecht. That's the sketch corner right there. That painted surface can get really slippery. Look at that. Front 5-0 all the way over the love seat. Got the Miller flip, squatting it out a little bit on re-entry. Well, I think uh, with Brighton just kind of throwing it down there right before Kisa, she knew she had to stay on. She knew she had to do a bunch of tricks back to back. Almost made it to the end, a solid run. Would be Kisa stoked Nakamura. to see her make that backside kick flip in her next runs. Great skating. Japan coming out strong with both Kihana and Kisa, 16 and 17 year olds. The new generation of Japanese are ripping. Finishing second place in the world in 2016, Jordan Barrett from Haleiwa, Hawaii by way now of Encinitas, California. Jordan, always super consistent. She's got a run in mind. She's gonna stick to it, starting with that wow. front side invert. Sketchy looking front side invert on that extension, not holding back at all. Back to the big extension, this time with an eggplant. Wow, so far so good. With 23 seconds goes, Jordan Barrett, she's gotta stay on. This is looking like a great run. Yeah, just 15 seconds to go for Jordan. She's been trying some new tricks in practice today that she didn't do in the semis Ooh. yesterday. Looked like she was maybe gonna hang up on that front side air. Had to jump off and go to the knees. And one thing about Jordan that maybe maybe underrated aspect a little bit of her skating, she falls really well. You <laughs> saw right there, that could have been really bad. <laughs> She's smart. She just went she, right, you she know, straight tried to out of it. She could have suck that one up, but you know when, you're, when your wheels and your trucks are over the coping, that is gonna be a huge slam if you try and commit to that one. Now if she makes that run, she's gonna be right there with Jordan. So uh, 
Yeah, Barrett's score comes through, 77.53. Here's a newcomer to the Vance Park Series, Grace Marhofer from Cocoa Beach, Florida. Yeah, out of Florida. She's uh, skating for Tony Alva's skateboard brand, Alva Skateboards now. There's got to be some, you know, a little bit. Tony Alva versus Christian Asoy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Lean disaster in the midsection. Grace has been someone that everyone is talking about is going to be such a threat for the future. And, uh, you know, the future might be now. <laughs> the future is now. She is only 14 years old. Yeah, we saw a huge improvement in Grace's skateboarding just from last summer to this summer. Unfortunately, going down over the kicker box. Well, if, the, if, if everything stopped right now, this would be the exact same, well, it's close to the same results as we saw from Malmo, Sweden last year. Brighton Zoyner in the lead. Nakamura in second place with a 78.82. Jordan Barrett in third with a 77.53. Now we're going to get to our top two qualifiers from yesterday's semifinals. Lizzie Armanto, 24 years old from Santa Monica, California. Look how she starts this run. Huge backside air in the deep end. Carving onto the steep bank. Really coming out swinging. Front side 5-0 off the flat bar. Super sketchy transfer from the flat bar all the way over the hip. One of the hardest tricks we've seen. Totally inverted on the extension. Great run so far for Lizzie. 15 seconds to go. We talked about it earlier. She just came out with an amazing part in the Birdhouse Saturdays video that just premiered a couple weeks ago. Crail slide in the deep end. One of the best runs we've seen out of Lizzie. Popping out right at 40 seconds. How is this, that gonna compare? something to be said for popping out like that with confidence. You land on your feet, kind of look up to the judges thinking, I got this. Yeah. Total command and control over her board. And here we go, Nora Vasconcelos, 24 years old from Boston, Massachusetts, now living in Oceanside, California. Nora was our top qualifier from yesterday. And check out Nora's first trick. This is a really hard trick just to start her run. And sketchy as well. That yeah. is so gnarly. I've seen so many guys and girls just try and start with tricks on that flat bar and hang up because that's big four inch pipe coping. Wow, the crowd loves Nora with that backside air. Super stylish pivot to fakey. Wow, almost not getting on the pool coping on that front side grind. Yeah, I kind of threw her out at a weird angle. Just Is she going for the kickflip? 5 0 to fakey through the elbow. Wow, eight seconds left. Nora's got to stay on here. Front side 5 0 to fakey. Last trick right here. Back disaster. Solid start for Nora. Not as good as her run yesterday in the semis, but that was, you know. Really good starts for Lizzie and Nora. That'll have her in the top three. For no sure. Doubt. She's got her lucky pants on. She said that earlier. And she's ready. You can see right there as the scores are going to be coming through for Nora Vasconcelos. Now the score is dropping for Lizzie Armanto. 82.82. That jumps her into second place. So Zoyner holds on the lead. Armanto in second. Waiting for scores to drop for Nora Vasconcelos. We have a new leader. 87.07 for Nora Vasconcelos. What was it about that run? You know, I think it was just, it was the height of the airs and just putting the whole run together. Really stylish over the jump box. Super late grab on the backside air in the deep end. Power skating with technical abilities. Wow. Kahana Ogawa now straight into it. Like we said, this is going to be rapid fire skateboarding. Kahana's with a good run so far. How rad was that? Kick flip rock over the spine. Grabbing the nose on the blunt to Fakey, <laughs> really sketchy. Fakey half cab over the kicker. Just getting up to that square cano is a mission in itself. She's got the boneless on the bank, and that's gonna be time. Great run for Kihana. Wow, 5 0 to Fakey and a Fakey nose blunt. Unfortunately, I think those might have been after time, so maybe Coach Asoy is gonna have to get her to reconfigure that line a little bit to get those last couple lip tricks in the 40 seconds. Hey, Kihana was ripping right there. She is, man. Rebounded from her first run, which was just a 20.55. She's going to triple that score, at least with that last run. All right, coming back from a big slam in her first run, Indiara asked from representing Santa Cruz skateboards, Vans, Layback Beer, G-Shock, Stance, Bronson Wheels, Bronson Jeez. Bearings, Richter Wheels, so Independent tough. Trucks. And a giant swell bow from fl Slams yesterday and today. Here we go, Indy Asp from Florinopolis, Brazil. 
huge stale fish out of the deep end. Wow, got a little bit wild. And unfortunately, that's going to count as a fall for Indiara. She'll probably try and throw a couple tricks just to keep her legs warm for the next run. So she'll have one more chance. All right, currently in second place with an 85.97. Brighton Zoiner is in. Curious to see what Brighton tries to switch it up with. She was in the lead until Nora bumped her out with the 87. There's the back blunt on the midsection. She's getting a little bit more urgency. You can tell she's trying to pack in tricks. 15 seconds to go. Love that back disaster revert. Backwards with speed. There's the gay twist. So sticking to this similar run as her first run. Hanging down. up the trucks on the lip slide revert. Yeah, I thought she was probably going to try and mix that run up. She already completed that run, uh, that full run her first time. I thought she was going to try and add some difficulty. But maybe she just wanted to do it a little bit cleaner. Brighton Joyner will have one more go. So all these skaters, eight of the world's best female park skaters. They get three runs, 40 seconds each. Skate until you fall. Best one run will count. And that one run could mean that you are the 2017 world champion of park skating. Kisa currently in fourth place. She actually won X Games Park in 2016, the last year that X Games was in Austin, Texas. So she has shown that she can perform at the big events. Love that front 5-0 over the love seat, back into the deep end with the Miller flip, hand a little bit under the coping. Wow, front blunt. You do not see a lot of female skaters doing a front blunt and yes. then a backside flip. Kisa loves it. Wow, how was that ending combo? Front blunt straight into a backside flip. Pretty rad that she, you could almost tell she was starting to sag a little bit in the middle of that run and then she just said, yeah. no, nope, turned and, it back I mean, on. She just powered that front blunt around. That is such a hard trick. And especially at the very end of your run when your legs are tired, I can't remember if I've ever seen a female skater do a front blunt in a park before. And she did it perfect. I mean, that was perfect. Absolutely. So Brighton Zoner's last score is an 81.59. Now let's go to Jordan Barrett. Always a threat to win. Anytime she drops in, we'll see if she can get this complete 40-second run. Yeah, I love the start of this run. Does the front side invert on the extension. Straight back to the eggplant. Trying to keep her speed. There's the backside ollie onto the bank, super floaty style. Big frontside boneless. 15 seconds to go. Full speed into the deep end, backside grab over the kicker, and a huge frontside oh, air. And exactly where she fell last second run. Second run in a row. Yeah, I saw her making that frontside air after the jump ramp every time in practice. It's got to be a little vexing, you know, but when, you, when, you, when a, you have that run and you're 30 the, seconds in. A lot of the guys and girls have told me when you land that jump box, you're hitting that deep end with a lot of speed. Grace Marhofer, 14 years old from Cocoa Beach, Florida. Rookie on the Vance Park Series. She was so excited when she earned this qualifying spot in Huntington Beach a few weeks ago. She's like, I've never been anywhere. How do I, I got to get a visa to go to China? How do I do that? That's a really good lean to tail, really late style on that lean to tail. Grace does all of her tricks really, really good. Look at that late grab on the nose on that backside air. She's also got the boneless on the bank, little early release on that one. Last couple seconds right here. Grace over the kicker. And again, she did the exact same thing as her first run as well. Same trick that she fell on run one. Tony Alva saying he discovered her at Kona Skate Park. Yeah. And she comes from a long line of skating, surfing, rippers. The Marhofer family from Cocoa Beach, Florida. And again, at 14 years old, so much confidence. We go to Lizzie Armanta, who was sitting in first for a minute there. Now she's in fourth with her first run at 82.82. Yeah, it looks like she's switching her run up a little bit. Different line to start off this second run. Wow. Instead of doing the air in the deep end, goes for the backside 5-0, and she was going for the finger flip lean to tail. I remember that was one that Lizzie had in her bag a couple years ago. We saw her earlier run doing a lean to tail on that extension. Definitely up in the difficulty with the finger flip lean to tail. 
She has to, with Nora dropping 87s on her first run. So the score comes through for Armanto, 43.42. Nora Vasconcelos currently in the lead. First place qualifier from yesterday, right now sitting with an 87.07 and the best entry into the that park of any of the That is such a hairy trick. That's four inch pipe on the top of that bank. It's so easy to hang up. When you see the slow-mo of that trick, you just see her truck and wheels just bonk over that lip. Love that pivot to fakie, really stylish 180. She just looks good on a skateboard, period, man. Powerful, smooth. Obviously, she's got all the technical abilities. Hopefully, we'll see her flipping her board here in this run. 5 to fakie through the elbow. Little mini ramp back to back right here to end the run with a front side 5 to fakie. Is she going to go for the kickflip flip pivot? It. Oh, man, almost did a front flip. That was really scary. Almost shins on the coping for that one. I feel like that run was right there with her first run as well. It really well. was. If she can clean up the ending, get that kickflip pivot, that is going to be a huge score. She's going to have one more shot at it. All right, skate fans, here we go. You're about to see who will be your 2017 world champion. There is no first wall rebate. Vasconcelos second run scores an 86.41. It is wide open. Ken Ogawa throw it down here. 16 years old from Kanagawa, Japan. This is Kihana Ogawa. Can't she do it, Neil? I love that kickflip rock disaster she does over the spine. If she's got a couple more tricks like that, maybe a couple of those lip tricks that were seemingly after time, the 5 to fakie and the fakie nose blunt, if she can squeeze those in the 40 seconds, I think she can pop up into the top three or four. Here we go, last runs for our female finalist, Kihana Ogawa. She's currently in sixth place. She needs a better oh, 87.08. That, that was terrifying. That could have been, that was so terrifying. She was going for a backside 5-0 over that love seat. Looks like she didn't quite have enough speed, came up short, and she was still going for it. Completely locked up on the spine. Regardless of how this thing shakes out, a, you know, her performance in her first ever Vance Park Series yeah, World Championships. Only 16 years old. All right, here we go. Indiara Asp currently in eighth, coming off a big slam. Can she put it together for her third oh and final run? Oh my gosh. I'm just so glad she didn't hit that elbow again. She's got a giant fat swell bow. You see the pink tape on the right elbow. Took a couple monster slams. Unfortunately, she's gonna be in eighth place, but we're happy that she's just in one piece. You know, that was a quick, fast rise from Indiara straight to the top ranks. Here goes reigning world champion, Brighton Zoiner. Big late grab backside air, about three feet out in that deep end. Stylish Smith grind all the way to the hip. There's the backside blunt. She does that trick every time. One of the most consistent female park skaters. It's just trick after trick after trick. Got the Andrek right on the coping. 15 seconds to go for Brighton. Back disaster revert, stalling that one on the deck. That's so scary. Grabbing the gate twist, last couple tricks. There's the front lip revert. Five seconds to go. Wow, backside 360. And that is time for Brighton Zoiner, currently in second place I think with an 85.97. An is that going to bump Nora? I think it's going to be really close. She's only just a little bit over a point behind Nora, but she added that back 360 right at time. Now it's up to the judges. It's Kisa Nakamura gets ready. Kisa right now in third place. First run, or second run was her high score, 83.52. She's going to wait for uh, Tim O'Connor, who's our on-deck announcer, to call her in. And don't forget, we've got Portuguese announcers on hand. You can watch the Portuguese webcast. And if, uh, if you're in China, you might be watching the Chinese webcast as we speak. Yeah, we've got the Mandarin webcast with our boy Andrew Guan next door. Wow, Kisa Nakamura. Totally bottom landed. And that's hard because you lose all your speed takes a couple walls of pumping the corners just to get your speed back. And midway through, Kisa Nakamura's run. Score comes in for Brighton Zoiner in 86.25, still in second place. Yeah, and unfortunately for Kisa, she totally missed her line right there. Had a couple of bad landings. She was gonna try and go all the way over the love seat front side. Did not have the speed, so just had to pop out. 
solid start for Kisa Nakamura with that 83.52. As of now, she is in third place, which would be a huge result, but we've got four skaters yet to go, and all four of them could flip hey, the script here, including Jordan Barrett. You and I are both friends with Jordan Barrett. She's competitive. She is not gonna be happy with fifth place. No, there's no way. You see the look on her face right there. That is pure determination. Jordan Barrett skates a ton at the Encinitas YMCA. Yeah, she skates Poots Park. She, I mean, she skates the she first was, ramp with with She Caballero. was the first one to practice this morning. When it, you know, it rained this morning. They were trying to dry the park. She was here at like 8 a.m. First one to the park. All right, third and final run for Jordan Barrett. Frontside invert on the extension to start it off. Love this line. Back disaster on the tombstone. There's the eggplant. She's made the beginning of her run every time, but has just struggled with the big frontside air in the deep end after she does the air over the jump box. This is the part of her run right here that's given her grief before. It all comes down to this frontside air. Oh, she made it. She almost <laughs> she clipped her wheels. That. Backside blunt and another fall with five seconds to go. And wow. I don't think Jordan's gonna be on the podium in 2017. But I mean, you gotta hand it to Jordan right there. She risked everything, pulling that frontside air in yeah, from that was near a, disaster. That was a big frontside air in the deep end also. She could improve on that 77.53. I think she just, by adding that last air, of course, if she would've got the blunt at the end of that run, she'd be looking at something in the 80s. We'll see what the uh, judges throw out for her. Coming up next, third and final run for Grace Marhofer, 14 years old in her first ever Vance Park Series World Championship. Grace is another skater who's fallen on the same trick, first and second run. She fell on the, on the grab over the kicker right there at the end of her run. Really good tuck knee invert in the deep end to start it off. Score comes through for Jordan Barrett, 79.45. That'll keep her in fifth place. Yeah, Grace has a really, you know, powerful, fluid style. All of her tricks are done really good. Nose grab on the backside air. There's the boneless. This is the trick right here over the jump box that she fell on both the last couple runs. There it is, perfect. And then the eggplant. She had so much speed for that eggplant. I think she floated it just a little bit too much, but Grace is gonna be a huge, you know, she's gonna be a huge part of women's park skateboarding's future. There you see the judges deliberating right there, punching in their scores. I am so impressed with Grace Marhofer, 14 years old, skating like that. Yeah, and she just, it's been amazing just to see her improvement just in the last year. We saw her at Huntington Beach in 2016, and it's just made a huge improvement to this year. Two skaters to go. Will it be Lizzie Armanto or Nora Vasconcelos? Lizzie right now sitting in fourth place. An 82.82 is her high score. If anyone can do it, it's Lizzie Armanto. I love this trick right here. Watch the frontside 5-0 off the bar. Oh, she totally missed it. Oh, that's what I was worried about. That is such a hard trick. Off the bank onto the big four inch pipe, front 5-0, floating over that hip. She made that her first run. That's a super risky trick. Took her out on her third and final run. That was a savage slam. And uh, with that, Nora Vasconcellos, you're looking at the 2017 Vans Park Series world champion, Nora Vasconcellos. This is her victory lap. What an incredible, you can see her Contest smiling. How rad Nora. is that? Nora is the world champion. Pivot to fakey. One of the best styles on a skateboard you will <laughs> ever see. You cannot wipe that smile off her face. She is just elated right now. She won the karaoke contest during the rain delay. Now she has won the skate contest, and she does not care at all that she fell on that 5 to fakey. <laughs> Congratulations, Nora. It's her Adidas teammate, Jack Fardell, who's been helping her a ton. Getting congratulations from our buddy Anthony Acosta. There's Jack. They've traveled the world with the Adidas team. Cool to see how much Jack has helped Nora. She's 24 years old from Boston, Massachusetts, currently living in Oceanside, California. She is your 2017 world champion. Let's go to Chris Pastris on the deck with Nora. Wow, so Nora, no podium at all in 2016. And then you podiumed in Huntington, 
you won qualifying, and now you're our 2017 VPS Women's World Champ. Describe what you're feeling. Um, I get it's definitely really exciting. I don't I don't win stuff, so I don't know. It's like just like a really new experience. So I'm trying to soak it in. Really proud of everybody else who skated and put up with the rain. And uh, I just think we're in such like an amazing place. Seeing everybody's style, seeing trick selection, seeing how young these girls are. Brighton and Lizzie always kind of like, like we're always just like pushing each other and I'm just so lucky. And I just want to say thank you and yeah, really happy. What's, what's the difference maker for you this year with skating so well in contest? This was my first year really just focusing on skateboarding. I stopped working at Welcome full time and uh, just got to kind of learn how I operate in all different avenues and I think doing the filming and doing the stuff outside of the contest series is like, it, it just adds something because it's not like this is my only motivation. Like a week ago I was filming and it's like, I really want to get back to that. And then to have this is just to supplement it. Well, now you can add contest monster to that amazing list. You rule. Congratulations, Nora Vasconcelos, 2017 VPS Women's World Champion. We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back. Chris Pastris here from the deck of the park in the Bun District of Shanghai. We've been battling the elements all week long, but as they say, pros will be pros. And despite the limited practice due to rain, yesterday we saw a heavy men's semifinal where underdog Oscar Rosenberg's improvisational lines and impossible trick combos earn him a spot in today's final. Brazil's Pedro Barros overcame an, a rolled ankle and blazed his way in a fourth on his final run of the day. Typical Pedro Barros form. 
Young Buck, Corey Juno, scorched the nose one slide through the deep end and into second place. And Alex Sorgente powered his way into first place with authority. All that brings us to today's final, where the slate gets wiped completely clean and the stage is set up for us to crown a new 2017 Vans Park Series men's world champion. So let's get this thing underway. I'm sending it up to my broadcast bros. Neil Hendricks, Chris Cote, take it away, my brothers. All right, we are psyched. Nora Vasconcella so far setting the precedent, becoming only the second ever Vans Park Series world champion. Now we are on to the men. It's been a long road all the way from Australia to here in Shanghai, China. Let's go back to the beginning of Vans Park Series 2017. We started on the beach, Manly Beach, Australia, where we saw a reinvigorated, reborn Tom Shaw. Yeah, Tom Shaw showed us at the very first stop. He was going to be a skater to be reckoned with for the entire year. So Tom Shark taking that first win from Manly Beach, Australia. We went down to Seta Negra, Brazil, where pretty much we all expected Pedro Barras to win, yeah. and he did it in amazing fashion. Anytime Pedro has the home Brazilian crowd behind him, you know he's going to rip. So Pedro Barras was our second stop winner. Then we went to Malmo, Sweden, where Alex Sargente has absolutely dominated the Crocsbox skate park. And uh, he did it again, make it pretty much an easy win for Alex Sorgente. He has that place figured out, man. He won 2016 World Championships. Then when we went back there for the tour stop this year, won again. So from Sweden, we went to the legendary Hastings Skate Park. Pedro Varos, his first time ever skating that park that's been there for 20 plus years, and he lit the place on fire. Yeah, we went there for a few years back with the Van Doren Invitational, then the last couple years with Vance Park Series. This was the first time Pedro ever went to Vancouver, and it was like a run of the ages. Google Pedro's winning run from Hastings in Vancouver. <laughs> it is so fun to watch the energy and the height and the speed. He almost basically destroyed a park that's been there for 20 plus years. Then we went to the Vans US Open of Surfing on Huntington Beach, California. Tom Shar from the first win we saw, whoa, Tom Shar is on something new here. And then he did it again in Huntington Beach. So both Tom Shar and Pedro Barros with two wins this year. Got the big question mark. We're here <laughs> in Shanghai for the Park Series World Championship. Well, Pastor said it right there, blank slate. Everything starts fresh you here know, in Shanghai, you China. talk about an even playing field. These guys have literally had five minutes of practice. It rained all morning. Anytime that there was a break in the weather, the women were in there practicing because the women's finals was going to be first. The guys couldn't practice at all until the women's was finished. They rode for like three minutes. Yeah, we had a, a you know, we, we got to see a glimpse of what we're going a bit to see here today, yesterday, for the semifinals. And some of the highlights you're about to see here are going to be absolutely mind-blowing. Yeah. Yesterday's semi was crazy. These guys didn't hold anything back because the organizers told them if it rains all weekend, this semifinal could be the World Championship's results. So guys held nothing back. We've always seen in the past some guys like Pedro might kind of try and take their cruiser run or safety run just to make the finals. Everyone had to try their hardest run. That might have been the World Championship result from yesterday. Well, the cut here at Vance Park Series is always heavy. We started with 24. We had to cut down to eight. Every run counted yesterday. Yeah, there were a few guys like Murillo Perez, you know, Carl Berglund luckily made it, but there were a couple guys like Roman Pavich and CJ Collins, even Kevin Kowalski right here, ended up in ninth place, just barely missing it. But these guys, we, we talked about it yesterday when Roman Pavich and CJ Collins took their runs. I was like, they're in the finals for sure. And like usual, the heats got gnarlier and gnarlier and gnarlier. Unfortunately, they didn't make it. Check out Willie Lawrence, frontside nose grind popping in. Ronnie Sandoval, one of the most smooth operators in the Vans Park series. But check out Pedro Barros, huge 360 into the backside grab 540. That was Pedro's last run too. He pretty much had three bails up until his very last run where he pulled it out. Oscar Rosenberg, Halberg, and Jack Fardell, two of the surprises for me yesterday. Man, we were so stoked to see Jack barely squeak it into the finals. Look at that, front nose grind to Smith grind for Alex Sorgente. CJ Collins, that was Alex Sorgente again with the lip slide. <laughs> <laughs> There's CJ. Yeah, CJ, of course, the people's champion with some of the most unique tricks we've ever seen yesterday. Yeah. 
Unfortunately, Ben Hatchell wasn't able to put it together in his runs. He had an amazing back tail off that flat bar. Corey Juneau, I think, is going to be one of the threats for the win today for sure. He'll flip Indy in the deep end. Yeah, so there are your highlights from yesterday, the semifinals, which we had to bump up one day early to get this thing going. Alex Sorgenta, your top qualifier with a 94.02. Corey Juno right there with him. Tom Shaw, of course, Mr. Consistency. Pedro Barras was out of contention till his fourth run. Pulled it all together. Carl Berglund, super consistent again. Oscar Rosenberg, Halberg, did it his way. Did not, did not change his skateboarding to make that final cut. And of course, some of your best park skaters in the planet. We don't have room for all of them here in the finals, so we, 11 to 20. So if there's your semi-finals results. Now we always pick who we're gonna watch, who we think is gonna take this win here. We're gonna start with you, Neil Hendricks. Who are you looking for today? I'm going Sorgente. Sorgente seems to really have it put together in this park. Creative use of the course. I love how he's starting the runs. He always puts it together at the big contest. Won the World Championships last year, won X yep. Games this yeah. year. He's got great combos, great back-to-back -back tricks. He's always able to find his speed going backwards. I'm going Sorgente. Well, I'm uh, on a good roll so far. I just picked Nora to win. She did it for me. I'm gonna go for Tom Shar. Tom Shar has been so consistent throughout this entire series. He's the Terminator got a solid foundation. He always seems to lay down that first run and then start adding tricks to improve on his score. Is this Shar attack coming to Shanghai? We're about to see. Let's go down to the deck. Chris Pastris, who's gonna win the World Championships here in Shanghai? Definitely some good picks, guys. I'm going with the Brazilian powerhouse, Pedro Barros. Pedro has had to sit out a few VPS events due to visa issues, so he's hungry. And we, know, we all know Pedro thrives under pressure in big stages, and then there is none bigger than the VPS World Championships here in Shanghai. And then, finally, Pedro goes higher, further, and faster than anyone in the field. I expect Pedro to go off this afternoon. Well, I know these Chinese skate fans get excited when Pedro drops in. I mean, everybody gets excited when Pedro drops in. Solid pick there. So, of course, if you're watching on Red Bull TV, we've got the Red Bull Analyzer. So if you miss anything, you can go back. Let's say you're in California right now. It's about midnight. You're gonna to wanna to go back to that heat analyzer and watch every second. And for our Portuguese fans, we've got a Portuguese webcast for you so you can tune in to our homies in Portuguese that will give you every bit of information you want. And Chris Cote here with New Hendrix, we're gonna get another rapid fire succession of skaters. Eight skaters, now we're gonna go back to four runs each for these skaters and uh, we're giving them a little bit extra time here, and we're racing rain as usual. Yeah, it looks like we are gonna have a window right here, so we are gonna give them four runs. These skaters are gonna have four runs, and first wall rebate only on the fourth run. The clock resets if you fall on your first trick. Best run counts, so these guys are gonna be trying really, really difficult runs. So it's one run that's gonna decide who will it, be your world champion. It's only 40 seconds of your life that can <laughs> make you it. the world champion. I love it, and here's what the judge is looking for. You take all these words you see on your screen, you package them up, and just that is just good skateboarding. All those words just, go just fast, mean, skate hard. do hard stuff, make it look cool. Shock the judges into giving you something most likely in the mid-90s. That's what we're looking for to win a Van Spark Series World Championship. And there you see the overview of the park, standing room only, see the stands absolutely packed. Let's take a look at how this thing is gonna go down. Jack Fardell, Yvonne Federico, Oscar rosenberg Halberg, Carl Berglund, Pedro Barras, Tom Schar, Corey Juno, and Alex Sorgente coming in as your first place qualifier from the semifinals yesterday. We're gonna start with Jack Fardell. What are you expecting from Jack? Jack, I, we were all so stoked on how Jack skated yesterday in the semifinals. He has one of the coolest tricks on that flat bar on the top of the bank that we've seen. Front 5-0 onto the flat bar all the way across from hip to hip. Hope to see that in Jack's run. I kind of think of Jack along the lines of Oski as skaters that don't change anything from how they would skate the streets to how they skate in contests. They do it their way, and it's always fun to see Jack Fardell. This is... So far, I mean, this is his best result yet, and he's yeah, peaking for, at the right time. Yeah, if you're going to make the final once a year, make it at the World Championships. From Queen Bay in Australia, 27 years old, Jack Fardell has 35 seconds on the clock. Look at this. Gap to 5-0 all the way across the hip. I haven't that seen that yet. That trick is so hard. Big backside grab over the hip into the deep end with the 5-0. That is the Fardell trademark. He can 5-0 to fakie. 
on anything. And it looks like he's adding, just, you know, he went low to high there. He did the whole rail capped out. Wow, front nose grind onto that big four inch pipe on top of the bank. Is this contest Jack Fardell? Who is this, this guy? This is amazing. Oh, the back D got away from him. You see him? Oh, it looks like it's raining. I s You're kidding me. Oh my gosh, you saw Jack kind of hold his hands up and then when we saw the concrete you saw the big drops you know we can't tell here in the sheltered broadcast booth that was an amazing run all right we're going to take a five minute delay now and get this park dry. so do you are they going to re i mean that that's this is kind of uh unprecedented territory not only did we see jack fardell put together one of the best runs we've ever seen him do in Vans Park Series, <laughs> but now we have the rain delay. Of course, Os Oski's skating in the rain. Yeah, luckily the Vans guys are down there with uh, contest director Ryan Clements, so they are gonna make sure that the park is in good condition before we restart the contest. You know, I mean, the key here, it, it, it's gotta be safe enough for these guys to skate, and even if there's a little bit of moisture in the park, you know, with the painted corners and everything, it just gets so slippery so we're just getting word now they will not be counting that first run for Jack Fardell you know unfortunately it was looking like it was going to be an insanely high scoring run but fortunately for Jack Fardell he's going to get to go again gather himself and hopefully he'll put down that same run and finish it yeah you want it to be a level playing field and we talked about it earlier that the thing that's tricky is it's the paint that gets really slick on this park you know you have the painted coping some of the art in the park paint on the deck. You see some of the guys starting their runs on the deck. So, uh, you know, to have a level playing field, you want to make sure that the guys all have dry park. So that run is not going to count for Jack Fardell. Going to have a full redo. Well, if anything, I mean, for Jack Fardell, he's got to think of it this way. He just got to uh, skate the park yeah. clear of you anybody saw, else, and that's a great say. practice the, run the for practice him. practice sessions, usually there's like five other guys trying to crash into you. He got about 35 seconds of practice all to himself to try his run. Well, while we do have a minute here as they're drying the park, let's take a look at our top three runs from yesterday. We're going to start with my pick for 2017 world champion, possibly Tom Shar threw it down yesterday. I mean, we've been getting used to seeing Tom Shar getting scores up in those high 80s. Yeah, I was really curious how Tom would adapt to this park with limited practice. But check this out, full speed, front Smith over the love seat straight into a huge trademark Tom Shar 540, but landing with speed, so he's still able to backside 5-0 over the love seat. Such an amazing run that he puts together. I love that floaty alley-oop backside ollie. He's really decoded, you know, what it takes to win these events, hasn't Seriously. he? Front feeble through the elbow in the deep end. Big spin back disaster. Super tricky on that tombstone. Jumping off the front nose grind in the deep end right at time. You know, a guy who was a, basically the talk of the town last night, everybody was saying Corey Juno is looking nearly unstoppable. This is his run from yeah, yesterday. Corey, this is a near win run. Yeah, Corey said that he kind of planned the very beginning of his run. Look at that front nose blunt slide in the deep end. He said he planned the beginning, but didn't really have a plan at the end. Kind of just trying to wing it. We kind of told him, hey, if you figure out the end of that run, you could win this thing. That front rock slide around that corner, trademark Corey Juno. That is one of the hardest tricks that we see that in every is contest. So hard on transition. He's got the front blunt on the extension as well. Look at that floaty front side Ollie. Getting a little knee buckle there. Last couple tricks right here. Pumping for speed. Heel flip Indy in the deep end. That was right when the buzzer went off in these last couple tricks. We call that one the Peter Blunt. Frontside pivot, popping it in, Ollie Blunt style. And your first place qualifier from yesterday, Alex Sorgente. How rad of a start is that? Look at that, back to back to back, just front nose grind popping over, Ollie over the kicker. He just seems to be able to, you know, adapt to any park. And I feel like this park, kind of similar to the Crocsbox Skate Park in Sweden. And he's yeah, been able to kind of take all those tricks he did to win last year's world championship and put him and apply them to this park. Look at that front blunt over the hip on the tombstone into a nose blunt on the big pipe on top of the bank. Really putting it together. Then look at that, Ollie 540. His first run in the semifinals, he did a backside 360, made that run and was able to step it up. 
on later runs and did the Ollie 540 to seal the deal. So if you're going just by the numbers, Sorgente coming in as your favorite to win the 2017 Vance Park Series World Championships. But again, those scores from yesterday, they do not carry over. So now it's just your finalists. And we've got eight skaters made the cut from 24. And uh, a lot of different roads that these guys took to get here, whether it was winning the Continental Championships to get themselves into the semis, being a Park Series Select Pro. But one thing is nobody is seated into the finals. Everybody had to battle to get into this top eight. Yeah, we had 24 skaters yesterday in the semifinals. So the top eight, all of these guys had to earn their spot in the finals here at the World Championships of the Vans Park Series. No freebies to make it to this day. There you see the unfortunate rain delay just when we thought things were going to get heavy in here. A little bit of rain comes down. So uh, the good thing is we did get our entire female world championship finals. And uh, Nora Vasconcelos, I mean, she made it look easy. Yeah, that is such a cool story. So stoked for Nora. She has worked so hard the last couple of years. You talked about her, you know, quit her full-time job at Welcome Skateboards. But she was at Welcome. boxes, yeah, sending she, them out? Yeah, she was working in the office, paying bills, and they were like, go out and be a pro skater. And now she's the Vans Park Series world champion. And she did it in a, uh, you know, st just stunning fashion. Uh, yesterday with adding the flip tricks to her power, her, her smooth skating, you know, she showed that she is, in fact, a contest skater. Now let's get back to the guys. Okay, Jack Fardell, Yvonne Federico, we did make our picks. You went with hey, that, you Alex know, Even though it was drizzling, that Jack Fardell run was really, really good. The front 5-0 on the flat bar all the way from hip to hip. I feel for Jack, too, because that was I such know, a good man. way to start. So let's go back to uh, Alex Sorgente, your pick. He's 19 years old, and he has been running. You know, he's been one of the only guys to really take to Pedro Barros as far as park skating competition. It's funny, in the last year or so, he's really seemed like he's able to step it up at the big contest. After he won last year in Malmo, he you know made some finals this year, but he won the X Games in Minneapolis. The first year X Games has been in Minneapolis. That was huge for him, and huge confidence boost coming here to Shanghai. Well, Alex has had a storied career already at just 19 years old. Let's take a look and get a little bit more information about Alex Sorgente. Sorgente needs to counterattack. Kick Lavindi. Only 540, are you kidding me? He wants that lead back. Wow, this is the gnarliest run I've ever seen Alex Sorgente do in his life. Give it up for the first ever Park Terrain World Champion here at the Vans Pro Skate Park Series, Alex Sorgente! I just moved here like at the beginning of the year. Don't have the couch yet, but we're gonna get it put in. Corey Juno, he's like the roommate right now. We skate so much together on the uh, park series. Like we traveled on all year, so it's funny like living together now. Alex is a roommate. It's chill. I knew he was gonna say that. It's chill. <laughs> yeah, this is like the first time I really had like had to be on a lease and like pay for rent. It's nice being away from my parents, be able to do my own thing, my own place. <sighs> Dude, I'm so sore. Oh. Skating is hard on the body. That's how we have Xbox. <laughs> how long have you been traveling overseas skating? First reason to go there for skating, I was probably like 12 years old for a contest. I think it was like the Quicksilver Bull Riders or something in uh, Sweden. Seeing the different cultures that they have everywhere since I was like really young is pretty cool. It's like I thought the biggest contest was the pool party, and then the park skating started happening, and then it started shifting, and it was more like trying to skate everything. I feel like it changed more to the park style of skating because street guys and vert guys can all come and skate together. Alex Sorgente, reigning Vans Park Series world champion. Yeah, I expect big things out of Sorgente. He's been skating so good recently. There's the nose grind pop over the hip. Really tricky lip tricks. Alley-oop body jar through the elbow in the deep end. 
setting his feet up, and another fall with 10 seconds to go. The pressure on for one last try. Looked like he oh. changed his lineup. I don't think that was the run that Alex wanted to do. Wow. 79.46, just under. Alex Sorgente does not make the cut. Oh, no, it wasn't a good run, though, but it was definitely good enough to get in there. Bobby, you still get in there for the... Dang it. Shanghai, so. Oh, I'm already in Shanghai, yeah. China? They're building like this huge park out there. It's gonna be wild. I wonder if I just ride 56 or 54. This is like the world championship. This is like the last one of the year, so everything goes down on this one. How different will that stop me to the other stops? There's like a different vibe on it. Like everyone knows like this is like the world championship and like this is where I wanna throw down and like try to try to make be the world champion. I don't wanna put that in there though. That sounds I don't wanna like be here saying like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, my goal is to go out there and win. Like my goal is to like go out there and skate, do the best I can. If I can win, it'd be sick, but it's also good to see all your homies doing good. It's rad, like, we're all friends, and everyone's, like, at a new level now, so it's gonna be pretty insane, the level of skating out there, so. Definitely gotta try to put some lines that together and throw down. Well, there is inherent pressure when you qualify for Shanghai, for the World Championships, I mean, that, sends the message right there. You want to win, you're here to win. But then again, you know, you're skating with all your friends. You don't want to be that guy that comes out and says, I'm going to win this thing. You got to defend the title, man. He's got the title belt, like uh, pro wrestling. <laughs> you got to defend the belt. I like it that he, you know, he, he threw it out there. He goes, I want to win this thing. I don't, I don't want to say that. I, I don't want to say that. I want to, you know, that's, that's a 19 year old yeah, right you, there. You don't get to this level of competitive pro skateboarding without having that competitive streak deep inside of you. Well, Alex Sorgente right there, you see he's uh, kind of making that transition from kid living with his parents to a uh, kid living with the homies, you see right there in Carlsbad, California. And Hey, I mean, that is yeah, a I, I talented household. I just looked over my shoulder, though. I saw Pops here in Shanghai, keeping him in check for the big contest. Well, Sorgente comes into this contest. You got to consider him one of the favorites. And after his performance yesterday, he feels very at home here at this uh, custom-built skate park. California Skate Parks, they uh, did some solid work here. Yeah, once again, want to throw a shout out to Vans Asia, who uh, did a little tribute to our buddy P-Stone that we lost a couple weeks ago. Did a cool little art piece. Shout out to P-Stone's friends and family. Everyone misses one of our fellow skateboard brothers that traveled the world with us for many years. Uh, he, he came to a few of the uh, Vance Park Series events. We've seen him in uh, Brazil. He enlightened me on how to build a boat for a barbecue. Really? And uh, he always had a, just a crew around him. He was, you know, kind of the guy making the food, just getting everybody hyped up and a, a huge loss. And I know that he's definitely inspired a, a lot of the guys that we have in this contest and a lot of skaters around the world just on how to be a you know a good human yeah i know a lot of these guys even in this final spent a lot of time with them on the road i know oski was traveling a lot with p-stone when p-stone was living in sweden pedro took those guys on uh, some of the brazil trips so huge loss for skateboarding so now the uh ladies have a chance to sit back the pressure is off and basically their Vance Park Series season is over, so I mean, that's gotta be a relief for some of the uh, some of the ladies on this tour, but now the men who have had that shotgun start then only to be just held back just 15 minutes longer. I mean, it's gotta mess with your mind a little bit, especially for Jack Fardell who was 10 seconds away yeah. from uh, really starting his campaign here in the World Championships. And, he got cut short. And now these guys are, you know, we're once again trying to dry the park and the guys are saying, hey, is it gonna be a scramble to skate today? Or are we gonna have to bump this thing till tomorrow? We've got about an hour and a half of light left. So I feel like if we get this park dry in the next half hour, we will be good for today. But uh, been here all day and gonna start running out of light in the next hour and a half. Well, one thing, uh, you know, we're thankful for is we've got 
Clements and the team from the border here. We've got everybody from bands here, so quick decisions can be made. You saw in the women's final, you know, generally the women's events, the contests are four runs, 40 seconds each. That one we went to three runs, so there are contingency plans in place, so yeah, we, we will crown a champion regardless of we what happens right here. We did talk to the whole crew earlier today. We decided if we're crunched on time, we, we could bump it down to three runs like we did with the women. Uh, we talked about, you know, pushing through to do two runs, but everyone really felt like that wouldn't be a legit world championships. They really wanted to do three runs so these guys could try really hard runs. We didn't want someone to just be able to take a safety run and win a world championships. So if we, uh, if we get crunched for time, we will bump it down to three runs. Well, let's uh, go down to the deck right now and uh, get the vibe from Chris Pastors, who is with our reigning world champion, Alex Orgente. So, Alex, how are these uh, rain delays for the competitive edge? Dude, I mean, it's a bummer, man. We're out here freaking waiting on all the rain. Like, it's just on and off. You know, they got to run the girls and stuff, which is rad. But, uh, yeah, as soon as we started doing practice, it's just the rain started coming down again. So, I mean, hopefully it'll dry up and we'll be able to run it. Any secrets to staying loose when you got to wait around like this? Um, yeah, I try to like stretch out a little bit, you know, get some yoga in there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> nah, I, I mean, literally just waiting around, trying to skate some flat ground and stuff, just kicking it. Uh, but yeah, you can't really do nothing about the rain, man. Just got to wait it out. I know you got your pops, Lucas, here with you. Is that helpful? Yeah, it's always nice when my dad comes to me. You know, he always keeps me in check and uh, makes sure I'm doing the right thing. Keeps you out of trouble? Yeah, exactly. You know, all of, all of us are all good friends, you know, so there's always some trouble to get into around here <laughs> when you're over, over on the other side of the world. <laughs> How are the nerves feeling right now? I know you're our last year's champion. Are you are you nervous about this year? Um, I mean, I'm pretty high top qualifying way, you know. So like, uh, I don't know. This is gonna be pretty interesting how it's all gonna go down. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some nerves going on. Um, I'm just gonna try to go out there and just do my best and see what happens. Just have a good time skating. You gonna make any adjustments to your qualifying winning line? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I I think I got a couple tricks that I didn't do in there. So I mean, maybe if I can pull them out, it would be rad. But. Well, I'll try. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, we hope we get this practice underway. Back to you guys. Best of luck, Alex. Thanks, Pastris. So Alex Sorgente looking very relaxed. I mean, all things considered, he is in the uh, same position as the rest of the seven skaters he's going against. He's got to wait and see what happens. How lucky is he to have a big bag of, like, 500 tricks to choose from? Yeah, he did 50 tricks in yeah. his run, and he's got about 15 left. I so. love that Ollie 540. As long as he keeps that Ollie 540 run is good by me. I mean, all we can do here is just look at the park and, of course, assess the situation. It has to be safe enough for our skateboarders to, to do what they do. You hear the crowd going wild. I'm looking over my shoulder. I see Krishna Soy and the Vans boys. Oh, I know what's going on. Product there you go. Toss. <laughs> That's cool because these guys have been <laughs> in this crowd for like seven hours exactly. in the rain. So uh, Soy and Van Doren. Little product toss. Yeah, every each and every one of these skate fans deserves something. So uh, from here in Shanghai, China, you know the last stop we had. It seems like ages ago was in Huntington Beach, California, as part of the Vans U.S. Open of Surfing. Another custom-built park right on the sand in Huntington Beach has to be one of our favorite stops. You got the Continental Championship, men's and women's skating going down. Huntington Beach is always an incredible show and always just a uh, you know kind of sets everything up for the World Championships and it did exactly that this year. This is your semifinals in Huntington Beach and this was gonna be
finalists, Jack Lee, Tom Sharp, Ben Hatchell, Carl Berglund, Corey Juno, CJ Collins, Keegan Palmer, Tristan Rennie. The finals are about to happen. We've got eight skaters, some of the best park skaters on the planet. Some skaters we've never even seen in competition in Vance Park. Arizona Jagger Heat. Tom Shaw right now. Currently looking good. Your leader with his 86.94. Great skating, Keegan Palmer. Wow, back to back perfection from Keegan Palmer. Oh. Love that oh. one. It flips right to his feet. That is so hard. Second place skater, CJ Collins. This is his final run, this 14 year old. Kick went straight over, straight over the spine. No tail, no truck, no board. That is so <laughs> hard. TJ Collins still in second place. All right, Ben Hatchell, last chance here. He's currently in third place. He made the magic happen last run. Look at this. Tail drag 540 over that spot. Just love to What a contest. Huntington Beach did not disappoint. Remember back in Huntington Beach when there was a sun? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't Seems seen like that big, bright ball in the sky over here in China. Well, it was about 90 degrees here yesterday for 10 minutes of the yeah. day. So uh, as you see, we got some of the pros there doing a little product giveaway. And on the deck right now, we've got Chris Pastros with the one and only Pedro Barros. So Pedro, I know you've uh, been battling an ankle injury this weekend. How's it feeling? Yeah, it's way better today. I've been here with Allison Paz. He's uh, my physio from Brazil. And luckily I brought him because we did some really intense work. It was like seven sessions of ice on that day and everything possibly else you could do it. And it was a gnarly slam. I didn't really think I was going to get back in time. So yesterday was a... Uh, for sure, like a tough day, I had to battle it out, but I'm stoked I made it to the finals and I hope to be putting out some different stuff. That was some serious preparation. So you pretty much stayed up all night icing your ankle Thursday night, right? Yeah, I just stayed nonstop, ice, ultrasounds, everything possible. And I think with the energy of everybody and just being out here and skateboarding itself, I'm gonna do it. And you always seem to come through on your final run. Why is that? What, what is it? Is it? Is it the moment? Is it the pressure? I don't know. It's just crazy. Like, all the way here in China, I didn't get my runs out. And, you know, I think when your will to do it and your energy is there, you can do it. So I just try to put it all out. Energy, man. You feed off the passion. And what's the China experience been like for you? Oh, it's crazy. I mean, it feels like we're in a different planet, you know? Everything is different. And it's also pretty magic because you get to see this whole scene and it's crazy and it's great. And how bad do you want this, this 2017 crown, Pedro? Oh man, for sure I want it. You know, it's been a, a crazy year for me. Just going, a bunch of stuff going on in my life and then being out here, going, give it, having a chance now is for sure something I want and let's see if it happens. And I know you missed Huntington. Does that affect your riding at all? Um, I don't, I don't 
really think so. I I have a lot of friends that skate in Brazil, and all the homies in the RTMF crew always keeps a solid session going on. And yeah, I think it's just a matter of the day, pretty much. The contest is always a day. Day by day. All right, you want to give a shout out to the homies watching in Brazil? A galera que tá acordada aí no Brasil, sei que é madrugada e sei que tá sendo difícil com toda essa chuva, mas a gente vai dar o um máximo aqui e vamos torcer pelo skate, que o skate sempre vence. E é isso aí. Um grande abraço a todas e vamos continuar nessa torcida. Yeah, Pedro, we're gonna let you practice. Get it, homeboy. Skate great, man. Back to you guys. It's always cool to talk to Pedro. He's definitely got a split personality. That's Pedro on the deck. Things change when he drops in. Yeah, and if you didn't see Pedro's Instagram, check out this slam. It was only 48 hours ago when he rolled his ankle super hard. I flew here on Thursday, and when I landed, they're like, hey, bummer, Pedro's out. He's not going to be able to skate. Then the next morning showed up, and Pedro's icing his ankle, and he's like, yep, I'm good to go. And Pedro ended up taking a killer run qualified in fourth spot and uh yeah no worse for wear just 48 hours ago rolled his ankle super bad it was a slam that would have taken out 99.9 percent of the rest of the skateboarding world so there you see the good news is we have skateboarders in the park that means we could potentially get this contest rolling we're going to take a quick break we'll be right back this is the vans park series world championships live from shanghai china The fire drill could be over. We're drying the park. There's skaters rolling. This is the 2017 Vans Park Series World Championships. We are live. Anything is possible. Shanghai, China has provided, of course, the incredible backdrop, but also some inclement weather. But we're battling through it. Chris Cote here with Neil Hendricks. What are we about to see? These guys are warming up for about the 19th time today. Hopefully, we're going to get this skateboard contest underway feels like deja vu because we've dried this park a ton of times today. I'm feeling good about it. And you got to feel good about these eight skateboarders who qualified through a brutal semifinal yesterday. Jack Fardell 
Oscar Rosenberg, Hallberg, Pedro Barras, Corey Juno, Ivan Federico, Carl Berglund, Tom Schar, and Alex Sorgente, your reigning world champion and also first place qualifier from yesterday. One of these eight skaters will be your 2017 world champion of park skating. We've got exactly an hour and 15 minutes until it gets dark. We've got time to do this contest. Oh, we're also battling darkness. Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. That makes it easy. As if these guys didn't need another thing to think about. We've talked about it before, but it is a wide open playing field. These guys have barely got any practice the last couple days. The only clear window yesterday, we ran the semifinals to create this top eight that we're gonna see today. But it's really interesting just to see how these guys are able to adapt to a park that they've barely skated. Well, and a lot of these guys thrive under the pressure. Alex Sorgente, Pedro Barros, those are two skaters that literally, when the crowd starts going wild, when time starts winding down, they just get better and better. And just as skateboard fans, it really shows how these guys are the best in the world just to see them adapting to this new park. Mere mortals like us are figuring out the transitions, figuring out the coping, and these guys can just eyeball it for a few minutes and just skate amazing. Well, and there's no videos that they could have watched. This is a brand, brand new brand park. New. It's only been here for a week. So uh, you're literally starting from scratch, but you know any of these guys have the potential right now. I mean. There's, a, of course, your favorites, but also, you know, look at a guy like Oscar Rosenberg, Halberg, Jack Fardell. There are some names in here that could shock the world. Yeah, Oski has been so fun to watch in the warm-up and semifinals. He's got such a unique take on this park. He's really using that flat bar on the bank. Jack Fardell, All see right. if he can do it again. So here's how things happen. Jack Fardell had dropped into his previous run, skated for a full 34 seconds, went down in the end, but this is a rebate because the rain came down Look just at, at the end of his run. Front 5-0 all the way, hip to hip. One of the gnarliest tricks you will see on that flat bar on top of the bank. I hope for Jack's sake he gets this complete run because he earned it. I love that 5-0 to fakey. Jack's known for being able to do that trick anywhere at any time. Nose grind fully on top, that big four inch pipe. Front side air onto the bank. Last couple seconds right here. There's the back disaster. What a start for Fardell. Yeah, he's gonna be psyched with this run. This will be his final trip. Big boneless for Jack Fardell. Wow. <laughs> Backside blunt over the hip on the tombstone, yeah, Jack. I think he right there just proved that he is in the, the great mental space. It, it's right so there. cool, last year the only final he made was at the World Championships in Malmo. This year the only final he made was at the World Championships in Shanghai. All right, so our skater dropping in second, 18 years old from Turin, Italy. Became a superstar in 2016. This is Ivan Federico. This guy flips his board more than anyone in the Vans Park Series. Check this foot set up right here. Kick flip, backside grab, didn't go to his feet. Yesterday in the semifinals, we saw him flip his board like four or five times in his semifinal run. All right, skate fans, you are gonna see just run, 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 run. We are in rapid fire mode here. And I think Yvonne, you see on the deck right there, which no matter how you know how much they dry that thing, it's still gotta be a little bit slick. That could have affected him going into that kick flip into that big bank. Look at how Oski starting his run. We saw him playing with this one yesterday. Thought he was going onto the flat bar, just rolling in backside. You would, 40 seconds you would on the never clock. Be able to tell what Oski wow, got backside. Wally popping in onto the bank. No one else is doing that. Little speed check. Wow. Back 360 into the bank. Pastor said it yesterday. This dude is, it's like watching it, it, and listening to improvisational it jazz. It really is, man. I had not seen him try that at all in practice. Like he is just can never it. teleport what he's going to do. All right, so from Oscar Rosenberg, Halberg. Carl Berglund now dropping in. This guy has become a consistent machine. Carl Berglund, of course, always adding a little bit extra to his tricks. Yeah, look at these combinations. You saw the lip slide to Sugar Cane, super long Smith grind. There's the back 5-0 to tail slide, and just adding those extra lip trick combinations really sets him apart. Front tail on top of the fence. Did anybody dry the fence? Yeah. So Carl Berglund right there, we saw him make that run, what? 
four times in a row yesterday. Yeah, I also saw him get sacked in practice, so that's definitely going to make him hesitate a little bit to commit to that front tail. So Pedro Barras yesterday left it up to his fourth and final run. He's looking a little bit more solid on his feet today after that vicious slam he took. Here goes our first look at Pedro Barros. It was only 48 hours ago. We thought Pedro was out for the weekend with a rolled ankle. You heard him say to Chris Pastors, he got seven ice treatment sessions throughout the night. Indy 360, it looked like he was gonna over-rotate. There's the 540. Wow, Pedro Barros with 20 seconds left. Looking like he's on. Let's see if he goes for the backside ollie over the bank. Wow, backside air. Board slide to Fakie right at time. Amazing first run for Pedro Barros. So scores just starting to trickle in here. There you see Jack Fardell in the lead with an 80.32. Yvonne Federico just with a 22. Oski 38. Carl Bergman with a 52. So no complete runs there yet. Now Pedro Barros, solid way to start his campaign, you can tell just by the way he dropped in there and by the way he skated. Yeah, I think he, Pedro, wants nothing more I think he's gonna be in the 80s even with that fall. All right, so Tom Shar, this has been the best competitive year of his life here on Vance Park Series, already two wins. Huge kickflip Indy onto the bank to start it off. I mean, with the backdrop, with that trick right there, that was just stunning. I love how he just pumps for speed out of that Smith grind. A little bottom landing on that backside 540. I love to hear the Chinese skate fans just going wild for Tom Shar. Wow, alley backside ollie. Looked like he was gonna under rotate. Had to force it around. I had a feeling this was gonna be Tom Shar versus Pedro Barros, and that's what it's looking like right now. These two titans Big throwing spin. hammers. Back disaster, perfect. And the nose grind popping out. Almost thought about grabbing the hat right there. Amazing run, Tom Shar. Yeah, that was just dismantling the park. And here scores dropping in for Pedro Barros in 88.36. Wow, Pedro put a huge score on the board. Now is that score from Tom Shar better? I think it's gonna be in that neighborhood. I'm glad I'm not a judge, because I think that's gonna be close. All right, so Corey Juno absolutely ripped yesterday in the semifinals. We'll see if he brings it today. Score drops from Tom Shar. It is enough, a 90.82. Tom Shar is your new leader. Wow, front nose blunt slide through the elbow of the deep end. That is impossible. Standing up on the front side nose grind over the love seat. Front rock slide through the elbow. The longest best one he's done yet. Oh my gosh, big back disaster. What is Corey going to end this run with? Oh, there's been a, the pace that has been set on these first runs. It's heavy. How are these guys skating this good after watching it rain all day and having like five minutes of warm up? That's going to be time for Corey Juno. Oh, the heel flip Indy fell right at time. All right, so there you see the bar has been set. Tom Shaw with a 90.82. What do these guys do? What do these guys have to do to match that run of Tom Shars? Hey, we saw Sorgente, his run yesterday with the Ollie five and just floating the Ollie over the kicker straight into a kickflip Indy. Alex can put a 90 on the board as well. Well, Sorgente is looking very calm, cool, collected. You know, he, we just interviewed him on the deck and he's ready for this. Alex Sorgente now with his first run here, 2017 wow. Vance Park Series World Championship. Sorgente, your reigning world champion. I thought he was gonna get hung up on that pipe on the nose grind first trick and there he did get hung up on the backside nose pick. It's probably one of the easiest tricks he'll do in his run, but looked like he had a little bit too much speed. Well, as it stands now, all eight skaters with a run under their belt. And here we go, back to the top of the order, Jack Fardell. Fardell currently in fourth place after that first run. That trick is so sick. Fardell's the only one that's grinding that flat bar from hip to hip. You gotta think his teammate, Nora, winning this contest may have inspired Jack. Yeah, and Jack's really helped Nora a ton on Vans Park Series, so it's definitely gotta stoke him out to see Nora win earlier today. Oh, the nose grind didn't quite lock in for Jack. 
heard some of the guys talking about they really love that flat bar obstacle, but that's really big four inch pipe on top of that bank. They said that's really hard to lock into. So from Jack Fardell, we're going to go to Yvonne Federico, who was really unstoppable in 2016. I think the rest of the field kind of caught up to him as far as the trick selection and what he did there. So Yvonne Federico, a little bit of a false start right there. They listed up all the scores there from that first run. So Yvonne now knows what he needs. Currently sitting in seventh place, which is an awkward spot for Yvonne because he's usually in the top three by now. Yvonne has no safety runs. He is trying such a difficult run. Watch how many times he flips his board. Man, super uncharacteristic. He's shocked. We're all shocked. Yeah. That is a trick we see him make 99% I mean, of the yesterday time. Yesterday he, he did that you know, did four or five flip tricks in the run that got him into the finals. But like Pedro Varas, Ivan Federico is a guy that thrives on the pressure. Oscar Rosenberg Halberg from Malmo, Sweden. He has uh, just quickly become pretty much everybody's, one of everybody's favorite skaters. All oh, that trick Because of so stuff like sketchy. that. Did you see that back foot almost getting hung up on top of that bank? Alley oop, 270 Ollie into the bank. Front 5 0 all the way off the extension. That is so sketchy to pop in. Nose bonk on the tombstone. Oski's on a hot one right now. Switch oh front 50 God. 50 over the hip. Where did that come from? One of the best runs we've ever seen out of Oski. He is just winging it right now. Front 5 0 off the flat bar. Back 360 to Fakey. That. And it's still going. I could watch that all day. That was madness. Not only one of his best runs, one of the best runs we've seen all year on Vance Park Series. So that cool. was amazing. Even Pedro Barros giving it up for Oski. The crowd is going nuts. Not just in the stands, on the deck Look too. The that. judges the, are freaking out. The judges out. are looking at each other like, what are what we, do you do? We don't even have a scoreboard that goes that high. That was some of the best skateboarding I've ever seen. All right, let's go down the deck. Chris Pastris, what's happening down there? Oh my gosh, guys. It's just going nuts down here. There's a full on Oski chant. Oscar the Rosenberg. The Chinese fans Albert. are just going nuts. That was 94. one of the best runs we've ever seen, and I don't think any of it was planned. Oscar, so insane. Oski just dropped a 94.92. Oski wow. is your new leader. His Swedish. Compadre Carl Berglund in the park right now. Can Carl get into the 90s as well? Well, that was a shocker of a run. Off the top rope with the front tail. Huge slop plant disaster. Look at this run from Carl Berglund. Front nose blunt on the tombstone. Oh, this whole thing just escalated, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, front side air disaster for Carl. Couple, couple more tricks in this run. Well, this contest has now become unhinged oh with skaters gosh. now knowing full well what they have to do to take a win the here. The young Swedes just threw down Oski back to back with Carl Berglund. Give it up for the kids from Malmo. Talk about a Shanghai surprise, Hendrix. Oski yeah. just hey. set this place ablaze. Oski always, you know, dominates the practice sessions. All of us love watching him skate. I don't think anyone predicted Oski to be at the top of the leaderboard. That is so cool to see. Well, and of any of these eight guys to really hype up the rest of the field and hype up the crowd, it, it was Oski. It's funny because it seemed like Oski got lost and he was still doing impossibly hard tricks. I'm still freaking on that run. But here we go. Reset, Pedro Barras now is in the park. Oh, you know, Pedro just full over amp Pedro style. He's been doing a backside grab onto that bank, went alley front side on that run, and unfortunately just washed out at the bottom of the tranny. Scores coming through for Carl Berglund. We have two Swedish skaters now in the top three. Carl drops an 88.48, that's enough to get him in third place. Rosenberg, Halberg in the lead. In second place, Tom Schar at the 90 We were saying 2. it was going to be knockdown drag out between Pedro Barros and Tom Schar. Then the Swedes showed up. Man. All right, so Tom Schar now. Park is silenced. Everyone trying to just react to what just happened. 
And here it goes. Tom Shard now hoping to reset the balance and get back to where he's used to being in the lead. Look, he's gonna add some difficulty. Kick flip burial. You saw first run, he just did the kick flip indie. Grabbing his back right there. He's been fighting a little bit of a back injury, but going for the kick flip burial indie, which is definitely harder than just straight kick flip indie. And now we get into your top two qualifiers from the semifinals. Corey Juno was on a tear yesterday. We'll see if he can throw this down for a full 40 second run. Hey, Corey had an amazing first run and he's down in fifth. Unfortunately, the nose blunt slide stuck. You heard those wheels dig in. Anytime you hear the, the bark of the wheels like that, it's a little bit too much weight on that front foot. Hoping to get things back on track here. Alex Sorgente, his first run. That is no -go. such a hard first trick with that nose grind. Wow, kickflip Indy, fully under rotated, still made it. Alex had a really early fall his first run. Going backwards into the deep end. Fakie to front 50. Usually where he starts winding things up. Look at that front blunt over the hip. Straight into the nose blunt, really popping high into that one. Alley oop frontside ollie. Last couple tricks. Is he going to do the ollie 540 right here? Backside 360. And then alley oop half cab. Amazing run for Alex. Wow. It's pretty, it's pretty insane that he has the ability to react like that, knowing that he's under rotating that. 540 and going, I'm just gonna go 360 and then backs up with three additional tricks. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, he's told Sorgente. me before that the, the th backside 360 is a little bit easier for him than the Ollie 540. So that might have been like a little bit of a safety maneuver just to have still have a step up for his next run. I love that it just gets silent between runs. When all these guys are rolling, you hear hoots, hollers, cheers, and whistles, and then it gets very silent as things, you know, kind of reset themselves. We're gonna go back to the top of the order. Jack Fardell is currently in seventh place. Sergente just dropped an 86.07. There's 40 seconds on the clock for Jack Fardell. Normally you see Sorgente make a run like that and it's on the podium for sure. With the level today, that run is in sixth place right now. Fardell had an amazing first run. He's all the way down in seventh. Is that low to high? Five out of fakey. Going lip slide around the elbow. I love this trick right here. Totally on top, the front nose grind. Wow, Fardell's off the top rope as well. Front <laughs> axle stall it. on the fence. That thing is sketchy. There is a big drop on the other side of that fence. Yeah, Jack, amazing run. This is the, be this is the, best, this is the best I've seen Fardell skate in a contest right Seriously. Now. He really has got this part figured out. All right, so now Jack Fardell is going to make things interesting. Power skating from the 27-year-old. Uh, he, he's going to bump up from that 80, I think, but I don't know if it's going to improve his position because there's a really big gap up to sixth place where Sorgente ended. I think Fardell is going to stay in seventh with that run. Ivan Federico is in a precarious position here. Jack Fardell drops an 83.64. Does improve, but stays in seventh place. I mean, if you're not dropping 90s here. You're getting left behind. So Yvonne Federico with two bails in yeah, his previous Yvonne's two runs. Really He's got to put things together. The guy that has not put a run together. Pedro has a couple falls, but one of his runs he made nearly to the end. Yvonne Federico switching his lineup. It looks like he decided not to do that kickflip melon that he fell on first and second run. There's the kickflip Indy over the hip. Now he's starting to take some risks. Yeah, he kind of started up with some setup tricks that I'm not used to seeing from Ivan Federico. Yeah, he just needed to get his confidence back. Wow, mute 540, squatting it in. Now he's getting some confidence. There's Yvonne. Kickflip melon disaster. Five seconds to go for Ivan. Wow, we Break call, his board? We call that one the natural disaster. Nose grab 360 to rock and roll. Turning it all the way around 540. Rad run for Yvonne Federico. And he pushed the strength of that board to the limit there on that natural disaster. Now that is a great run for Yvonne. You know that the beginning, you know, it was a slow start, but he really let things kind of heat up as he went along. He's gonna get things, uh, 
getting pretty interesting here in the top four, but this is just the biggest shock of yeah, the contest. Oscar leader. Rosenberg Halberg sitting in, four, in first place with a 94.92. Qualified sixth yesterday. We did not think that Oski would factor into the equation for the win today, and he just put the shocker of a 94.92 on the board. Wow, the score comes through for Yvonne. What? Pop shove <laughs> to nose grind or pop shove to 50. Not really sure what Oski was going there, but he's like, hey, I made the magic happen last run. I'll just try all of my hardest tricks. It really is all or nothing with Oski. He, he does not care yeah, he's got about nothing scores. To lose. He's got a 94, just try everything. Well, this is pretty wild right here. Ivan Federico with an 82.60, still in eighth place. Here goes Carl Berglund now. Currently in third place. Yeah, I think the thing with Yvonne is he took a couple of those hard tricks out. Oh, the 5-0 to tail slide did not lock in for Carl Berglund. But Yvonne, even though he made that full complete run, that was not near as hard as the run he did yesterday in the semifinals. We saw he fell on that kickflip melon transfer a couple times. He had to, you know, add a couple safer tricks in there. His first four tricks were basically setups. Yeah. So he's got to clean up the beginning. Here goes Pedro Barros. Pedro. With an 88.36 is in fourth place. Watch this full speed Pedro attack. Doing a little speed check right there to check his speed for the Indy 360. Perfect landing into the 540. Dodging the hat. Alley backside air. This is always something special to watch. He's able to carve over the love seat even when he doesn't have the right angle on that one. Is he going to go over the gap right here? Big backside ollie, a little bit of a bottom land. Last trick right here for Pedro, what's he got? Blunt to fakie on the tombstone. Oh. Wow. Now that is gonna make things interesting. Let's go down to the deck with Chris Pastris. Yeah, guys, wow, what a run from Pedro Barros. Just a full-on battle happening right now. And I know uh, Tom Shar is coming up next. This is gonna be an insane final that's shaping up here. So all skaters now into their third runs. Pedro Barros I just mean, dropped probably usually, his best run. Usually when Pedro makes a run like that, it, it goes to the top. But when Oski has a 94 on the board, I don't think Pedro goes to the top. It's pretty interesting too how these guys are seated. Pedro is usually one of the last skaters to go. Yeah. He's right in the middle of the field, which is probably not where he's used to skating from. So here goes Tom Schar, qualified third yesterday. He is currently in second place with a 90.82. There's the kickflip burial. Now his board's backwards, so he's probably gonna do a burial 540, maybe a body burial 540 down here with the board backwards. There's the body burial, throws it away at the very last second. Now that was going to be a run that would have got him most likely into the lead had he finished everything there. So the score comes through for Pedro Barros. He jumps into third place with an 89.05, just edging out Carl Berglund. So at the moment, he bumped Carl off the podium. Here goes Corey Juno from San Diego, California. He is a creature fiend, and he has been wow looking sharp. That's the first 540 I've seen. Corey make this week in this park. Frontside invert on the extension, trying to keep his speed. That, he's stuck again on the nose blunt. You saw him make that nose blunt slide first run. One of the hardest tricks you will see anyone do in this deep end. But it looked like he stuck that time just like his second run. Well, he just got knocked into fifth place with Pedro Barros getting that third place. Here goes Alex Sorgente, who's currently sitting in sixth place, his highest score in 86.07. Yeah, Sorgente's gonna have to throw it all out right now. He's gonna have to add the Ollie five if he wants to be world champion again. He won last year in Malmo, currently in sixth place. Switching up his line a little bit here. Taking it to Fakie in the deep end. Fakey to Smith grind through the elbow. I love that front blunt over the hip on the tombstone, popping into the nose blunt. Alley-oop frontside ollie. Couple more tricks right here. He needs the ollie 540. Wow, how That's did he it. make that? Did you see his toes? Wow, Sargente now making a statement with that last run. Absolutely, that's gonna be his best run. He had an 86 in sixth place. I think the Ollie 540 is gonna score higher than the backside 360 that he did the previous run. 
Wow, Sorgente, now you hear silence creep back over the crowd. It's interesting, man. It looks like Sorgente isn't happy. Kind of threw his board down. I wonder if uh, maybe, I don't know if that was, uh, if he was stoked he made that run or want some more. So the judges now concentrating, locking in those scores. And uh, here's, here's where it all happens. We're going to be looking at the fourth and final runs for our eight finalists here. We are live from Shanghai. This is the 2017 Vans Park Series World Championship. Score comes through for Sorgente, a 90.58. That knocks Pedro Barros into fourth place. Oscar Rosenberg Halbrick still in the lead with final runs, everything on the line here. Yeah, definitely showed that the judges really liked that Ollie 540 more than the backside 360, because that was really the only thing that, uh, that Alex changed in that run. Crazy the shuffling of our top three in that last uh, series so of last run means first wall rebate. All right, Jack Fardell, fourth and final run here from the skater out of Australia. What's wow, he gonna do rip slide all the way across the flat bar. <laughs> oh man, that's what first wall rebate is for. You're able to try something really hard first trick. If you fall, full restart. And time resets, everything resets. The judges will put that out of their mind. You get yep. a completely Total clean slate. So Jack Fardell right now sitting in seventh place. This will I'd be love his to, best it finish. It looked like Jack could do that. I'd love to see Jack just go for that again and make it. We'll see, here goes Jack Fardell. He's got 40 seconds on the clock. No one else is doing that lip slide all the way across the flat bar. That is so sketchy to land, popping all the way over onto the far side of that hip. I am so psyched from what I saw from Jack Fardell today. The best we've seen him skate in Vans Park Series yet. As it stands now, seventh place in the world. That's huge. I bet he ends up doing this trick after the contest. All right, so final looks for a guy that's seemingly always in the top three. Right now sitting at eighth place. Last chance for this skater out of Turin, Italy, Ivan Federico. There's the kickflip backside grab transfer that he fell on two runs, two flip tricks in the first three seconds of his run. This is deja vu, because we've seen Ivan do this in the past. Oh, he almost hung. He missed the 540. That was supposed to be a 540 in the deep end. Had to do the backside bonus. Got his rhythm back, kickflip melon disaster. Wow, there's the 540. He totally improvised and was able to do the 540 somewhere else in the deep end in his run. Finger flip lean disaster. It's crazy that these guys have so many tricks and they're so good that they can just totally miss their line and figure it out. And it's funny because I don't think that was the run he wanted, but it he wasn't somehow all. made it work. You know, he totally deck checked on the box when he did the nose grab tweaker over the kicker. He fully hung up on the top. He was gonna do a 540, his knees buckled, and he had to do the backside bonus in the deep end and ended up totally switching his run. All right, so now I'm waiting for scores from Yvonne Federico. Darkness is falling around us. We've got six skaters yet to roll. Oscar Rosenberg Halberg, the biggest surprise of the entire season. One of the biggest surprises in Vance Park Series competition history. Here he goes, setting things up. Oh my oh. gosh. Pop shoved the 50-50, the power slide all the way down the bank. Nose bonk over the tombstone. Wow, Oski is hyped. His first run could potentially be the run that gets him hey, and that his trick. first ever world championship. Pop shoved the 50-50 was one of the tricks of the contest. All right, so <laughs> I mean, you got to gather yourself here. We're back to Carl Berglund from Malmo, Sweden. He will have the luxury of our first wall rebate. Love that lip slide to Sugarcane. Super long Smith run washed out. Bummer to see Carl go down, currently in fifth place. And man, it has been so fun to watch him skate Vans Park Series in 2017. He's easily the most improved skater from 2016. 100%. He's gonna be a threat to win some of these next year. All right, this is it, folks. Will Pedro Barras achieve 
what he's been fighting for his whole oh career. Oh my gosh, this is when Pedro is at his best. When the pressure is on and he is not in the lead, he's always able to pull something out special. The first wall rebate is off the table now. How does he do it, He man? forced it in. It's unbelievable. Stale fish onto the bank. All right, Squeaking 15 the seconds. Over the love seat. Come on, Pedro. Keep it rolling. Nine seconds to go. Backside Ollie all the way over the bank. Last couple seconds right here. What's he got? Last trick for Pedro. Indy 540. <laughs> 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 Pastris! Wow. Can you believe Dude, it? When the pressure is high, that's when Pedro succeeds. You can feel the <laughs> you can feel the energy. The barometric pressure is just going through the roof. Hey, so those insane guys right, have the right now. The worst job right now. Such a rad international ju judging panel. You saw Luca Basilica from Italy, Renton Miller from Australia, Lincoln Ueda from Brazil. Mike Pragnell from Canada and head judge Jason Rothmeyer from the U.S. What are they going to give Pedro Barros? Tell us about that last trick. I mean, with, it, with seemingly no speed left. He is just so good at spin. You know, Indy 540 completely upside down. We're not going to let we're not going to let you off the hook just yet. Pedro Barros' score comes through. It's a 93.46, enough for second place, but Oscar rosenberg Hallberg still in the lead. Oski is still in the lead. Pedro took a swing and didn't get Oski. Wow, so two completely polar opposite runs. Oski and Pedro, now it's up to Tom Schar. This is his fourth and final run. Is this a world championship run? Getting the first wall rebate for the kickflip burial. He's gonna go, I believe he's gonna try the body burial 540 in the deep end. There it is. Oh, and he threw it away. Tom Shar is not gonna be your world champion in 2017. Two skaters. Yet what a year to though. Roll. Hey, hats off to Tom Shar. Hats off. Hats are always flying off. But he won two tour stops on Vans Park Series this year. The only other skater that's ever done that is Pedro Barra. So Tom Shar is in good company. All right, Corey Juno. Now we got roommate versus roommate here. Corey Juno and Alex Sorgente. This is last chance for Corey Juno. Skated so incredibly well yesterday. Almost took the win in the semifinals. All he has to do is get yesterday's run with just a little bit more spice. All comes down to that nose blunt slide in the deep end. He made it his first run. You saw him stick on his second and third run. He's got to make that nose blunt slide to get into the 90s. 40 seconds on the clock for Corey Juno. His last chance. There's the backside 540. Wow, and he slams into the waterfall. You saw him, all his weight was over his front foot. I thought he was going to be able to ride it off. And then when he went up the waterfall, he just shoulder checked. That is a harsh reality of contest skating right there. You saw how bad he wanted to make that trip. I was talking to Corey Juno. You know, he had a wrist injury from the Park Series stop in Vancouver. And he wasn't able to do those backside 540s for a couple months. Look at this, backside 540. His weight is totally over his front foot and just straight to the shoulder on the waterfall. That was an awful slam. And uh, he's going to be uh, looked at right now by our medical crew. Right. That was you know one what? of the worst slams we've seen yet. He's in more mental pain than physical pain. Corey's going to be OK, but he's just bummed he wasn't able to make that full run, I think. It all comes down to this. Your reigning world champion, Alex Sorgente. First wall rebate. <laughs> you got it. The pressure now you is on. pressure? This is pressure. Alex Sorgente has to make the run of his life right now to bump the underdog off the top spot. Popped in perfect. Taking some extra risk. There's the kickflip Indy. Big body jar on the extension. Can Alex hold it together? He knows he's got to add some difficulty. He threw everything out there last run and just got a 90. He needs four points to get up to where Oski is. Building some momentum here. I love how high he pops into that front nose blunt. 
alley-oop frontside alley. 10 seconds to go here, will it be enough? There's the Ollie 540. Ollie to fakey, amazing. Alex Sorgente, one of the best at performing under pressure. Wow, so same run. No, he added the kickflip indie. Okay, so that was the, the will that be the yeah, difference? Yeah, he added the kickflip indie. So before he had a 90.58, I believe in that deep end spot, he just did a body jar his last couple runs that he made, added the kickflip indie. So we're gonna see how much the judges value that flip trick in the deep end. Well, either way, Oscar Rosenberg Halberg has put on a performance for the ages here. And if this thing shakes out like it could possibly shake out, it could be yeah. a total shock in Shanghai. I think Sorgente is going to improve, but I think Oski's going to hold on to it. I can't imagine that Sorgente would bump up five points with that one trick. Oski has a 94.92. I could see Sorgente bumping up into like 92 or 93. Well, as the score comes through, let's go down to Chris Pastris on the deck. Wow, Oscar. Oski. First time on our Vans Park Series podium, and you're our global champion. What are you feeling right now? I'm hyped, I'm hyped. I don't know, I'm just skating. I'm, I'm fucking hyped. <laughs> yeah. Man, your, your lines are just so improvisational. Are they planned at all? I don't know, like maybe like 30% planned, and then just trying to like see what happens. Nice, amazing. Yeah. And I know you're from Sweden. You got any words to uh, the viewers at home that are tuned into the webcast from home? Oh yes, oh yes, fuck yeah. Hyped, hyped you guys watching. You wanna say something in Swedish? Yeah, tack så mycket, tack så mycket. For Sverige. What does that translate to? Thank you so much for Sweden. Yeah. Congratulations, Oscar Rosenberg, 2017 men's world champion here from Shanghai, China. Back to you, <laughs> we're gonna take a break. We'll be right back. Shock and awe in Shanghai for the Vans Park Series World Championships. And not just due to the fact that Oscar Rosenberg Halberg is your new world champion, but just the level that we saw. You look at Jack Bardell's run, an 83.64 for his high scoring run. And last. that's last place. <laughs> I, I was so shocked at the level skating. I thought with the limited practice, with the rain off and on, the guys skating and then taking a break, the, all these guys literally had five minutes of practice before the first start today. I, I'm shocked at how good these guys were able to skate. Oscar Rosemary Halberg literally comes from you know the, the depths, right? He's been a Park Series Select Pro for the last two years, and so we know how good he is. And, and we love watching him in practice. And, and his skating just doesn't always translate to a 40 second run. He's always, you know, finds some weird obstacle that he works on. He's always doing tricks on the deck, not in the park. And Oscar, it was just one of those magic moments because he totally got lost. He was totally off the, land, the run that he planned. And he did a switch 50-50 off the flat bar on the bank. And I think he's as surprised as anybody 
that he won. You saw him there in the uh, post-win interview with Chris Pastris, just kind of a loss for words. And what he immediately did right after that was drop right back in his yeah. park. He didn't want to be a part of it. He They're just wanted yelling, to skate. Hey, we, we need to do the awards. Get over to the podium. He's still skating, the last guy in the park. So some of the other surprises here, Alex Sorgente, fourth place. He is our reigning world champion, and he almost had it there his last run. It just wasn't quite enough, but you got to give it up. Pedro Barros, Tom Schar, second and third, two incredible skaters battling it out, and who would have thought that this would be your winning run? Oscar rosenberg Hallberg. It's a testament to what Sweden's been doing for skateboarding. Oscar is your world champion. Let's go to Chris Pastors with the awards. Thank you guys. We are super proud to be here on the world famous Bund Waterfront here in Shanghai, China for the final stop of the 2017 Vans Pro Skate Series World Championships. Want to thank you to Vans, Thrasher, Red Bull TV, the Border Crew, California Skate Parks, the city of Shanghai. You guys stuck with us through all this rain. Thank you very much. And a special thanks to our athletes who just killed it. What a contest. All right, now we have our presenters. We've got Michael Cow from Vans China. Welcome, Michael. Justin Regan, the mastermind behind the Vans Park Series. And the godfather of Vans, Mr. Steve Van Doren, to hand out our awards. Yes, round of applause for Steve Van Doren. We love you, Steve. All right, and now the women's awards. In third place, Bringing home $5,000 from Japan, Kisa Nakamura. Yeah, Kisa. And then in second place, last year's 2016 champion, 13-year-old Brighton Zoiner. Yeah, Brighton. Put your hands together. Great job, Brighton. Bringing home over $9,000. And then in first place, with the award from the only, the one and only Mr. Steve Van Doren, the ever so stylish Nora Vasconcelos. Yeah, Nora. Yeah. The people's champ. Congratulations, you three. Great job. Let's have another round of applause for these ladies. We're gonna bring a quick photo op, and then we're gonna bring up our men. Give us uh, just a few minutes for some photos here. All right, and let's bring up our men next. Congratulations, Kisa, Brighton, and Nora. Amazing job. All right, now we've got our men's awards. In third place, last year's 2016 Vans Park Series champion, excuse me, not, not Huntington Beach's champion, Tom Shar. Get up there, Tom. <laughs> 10 grand. And then in second place, doing it for Brazil, Pedro Barros. Yeah, Pedro. Yeah, brother. This was such a tough contest to judge. And then in first place from Sweden, the first time on our Vans Park Series podium, Oscar Rosenberg, your 2017 Vans Park Series men's champion. Yeah, Oscar. Oski, 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 Oski. Right here, everybody. Right here, right here. One, two. Yeah, Oski. Congratulations to our men's winners. Thank you, Shanghai. Yeah, get her first. Okay, get it. Alright, everybody right here on three. One, two, and 
Thank you guys. Thank you, crowd, for sticking with us through all this rain. We're gonna send it back up to the booth. We'll see you next year. Still a stunning finish. Nora Vasconcellos and Oscar Rosenberg Halberg, your two world champions here on the Vans I, Park Series. I fully expected Pedro and Tom to be on that podium. Did not expect Oski and taking the win at that. That is so cool. What an amazing story. I love that he did it with his second run too. His first run was a 38.97 going, okay, that's good. You know, we kind of expect Oski to have some difficulties with consistency. Then he drops that hammer. 94.92. Cool to see such an international podium. Sweden in first, Brazil in second, and U.S. with Tom Schar in third. We're going to get more on Oscar Rosenberg Halberg. Let's go back to earlier today. It seems like today was a marathon of skateboarding, but we actually only had two one and a half hour bursts of skating, and it all started with the women. This is your current world champion, Nora Vasconcelos. Yeah, that first trick, just doing that board slide to lip slide, and look at the height on that backside air in the deep end. So many girls did the, the launch over the kicker, and then the air in the deep end, and Nora's was just so much higher and more stylish than anyone. Yeah, and Nora, a self-confessed non-contest skater, well, she's completely erased her history of non-competitiveness. With that win right there, she did it with grace, she did it with style, technical tricks, and powerful skating. What a great ambassador to the sport of skateboarding. Nora Vasconcellos is your 2017 Vans Park Series World Champion. And here's your complete results for the women. What an incredible year we've had here on the Vans Park Series. One, two, and three, all skaters that have really just earned everything they've gotten. Brighton Zoyner, no surprise there in second place, but to me, Kisa Nakamura in third place, that's an incredible result for the young Japanese skater. Yeah, that's so cool, and, and the future's looking bright. You see Brighton, only 13 years old in second. Grace Marhofer, first time she made it to the World Championships. She's only 14 years old in fifth place. Well, we started the day off with the women and they absolutely shredded. Nearly left us with nothing left but dust from this park. The women skated so good. Then it was on to the men again. It was a stop start situation. And then when the park finally dried, things got wild. Let's take a look at Oscar Rosenberg Hallberg's uh, run. I mean, this to me was just confusing. It was so good, yeah. so much going on. Just high speed backside roll in to start it off. Wally off the fence, backside Ollie, and then alley -oop back 270 into the bank. Front 5-0 all the way across the extension. Nose bonks off the tombstone. Blind side on the Indy to Fakie, straight into a switch front 50-50. It was just hard trick after hard trick after hard trick. Even when he got a little bit lost in his run, he was still throwing down hammers. Oscar Rosenberg, Hallberg gets a congratulations from Pedro, Yvonne Federico, his fellow competitors on the deck. That was, that was truly one of those moments where you could just tell he was one with his skateboard. I mean, there was no, there was, nothing was gonna stop Oscar right there. He was completely in, in the zone. That was just insanity. Honestly, the level of skating, when you look down at the, the finishers from like fifth, sixth, and seventh, those were runs that would win some top pro contests. Absolutely, I mean, you looked at Pedro's 93.46. That was basically a similar run that he did to win in Hast at Hastings Park in For sure. Canada. And for him to get second with that run, I mean, that shows you the work that Oscar did there. And I, I'm still thinking back at Oscar's run. And it was just, that was some of the greatest skateboarding I've ever seen. Now this is a look. This is your 2017 Vans Park Series Select Pros. Wait, Oscar Rosenberg Halberg. 2018. 2018. They got the pass for next year. They got they the, the golden select ticket. Pros for next year. So Pedro Barros, Tom Schar, Alex Sorgente, Carl Berglund, Corey Juno. Jack Fardell getting the call back up. So an incredible list of skaters right there. So 2018 is already looking solid. We've got your three top finishing females getting that golden ticket into the Park Series Select Pro status. I don't want the Park status. Series year to end. Can't we do this again like next weekend? Well, you're gonna have to wait till 2018. That's a wrap from Vans Park Series 2017. What a way to end it. 
live from Shanghai, China. We waited all day for that finals. It was worth the wait. Some of the best skateboarding hey, I've ever hey, seen. Hey, thanks everyone for helping dry the park. All the van staff, the border staff, the legendary pro <laughs> Steve Van Doren was out there. Thanks to everyone for chipping in today. And thanks to all of you at home for watching us on Red Bull TV and Vans Park Series. Remember, check out the Red Bull Heat Analyzer. You're not going to want to miss a second of skateboarding from here in Shanghai, China. So on behalf of all of us here, the production crew, and of course, the team here at Vans, we thank you for watching the 2017 Vans Park Series World Championships. We're gonna leave you with some of the most incredible highlights you'll ever see. This is skateboarding live from Shanghai. Check out these highlights. We'll see you in 2018.